Hi and welcome to the latest video on this channel. Thank you for joining us. Um, I just want to say, uh, you know, really well done for you uh, spending the time to watch this video over the next hour or so. It's going to be packed full of content. Uh, and the reason for that is because you could have been doing something alternative like, you know, watching Netflix, maybe a big box set that's going to consume your time um, and provide no value. You could have been cutting the grass, you know, so this is like a $10 job. We don't want to be doing a $10 job because we want to be earning life-changing sums of money. Um, you could have been washing the car, again, just another $10 job. Or you could have been doing something exciting like walking around the supermarket, um, spending money on food that is just no good for you uh, and just taking up all your time. So, you know, thank you for joining us. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to be learning a lot of stuff throughout this webinar um, over the next hour or so. So stick with us. It's going to be of great value. And these are some of the things that we're going to be covering. So why other property strategies may not get you where you want to be. Uh, a lot of people watching this webinar will be um, you know, already doing existing property like buy to let HMOs, for example. Some of you may be looking to get into property uh, and you know, maybe not sure what strategy you want to do. So we'll go through all those strategies and why we think property development is the best one. Um, you know, it's the best strategy for building real wealth. So we're not talking about a few hundred pound a month cash flow. You know, a few hundred pound a month is nice, but it doesn't really change your lifestyle that much. Um, and we'll talk about why property development uh, is, you know, our preferred strategy. Um, we're going to be running through the full eight-step system to becoming a property developer. So what we do is a, a sort of rinse and repeat strategy. You know, it's just a system that anybody can follow, whether you've got experience or not. Um, and we're going to show you how you can make six figures from your first property development. So we're going to be running through a load of case studies to show you the sort of deals that um, you know you can do and the sort of returns that you're going to get for building those deals out. Um, we're going to be showing you how you can do property developments, you know, even if you don't have any experience or money. Um, so we're going to again, we're going to show you some case studies from some of the people that I've trained and mentored um, that have gone on to do amazing, you know, developments uh, just by following that eight-step system and some of the some of the profits that they're looking to make as well. So, we'll, uh, you know, stick around right the way through the end of the uh, of the program. And, you know, the game-changing future of property development it is changing rapidly. And if you don't evolve, you're going to get left behind. And, you know, companies like HMV, Blockbuster, um, you know, the Atari, there's all these sort of things that have been around for years. And because they didn't adapt to the latest technology and the way things were moving, because, you know, we live differently today than what we used to, um, those companies die. So we want to give you a, a bit of an insight into where the future of development is going. And, you know, if you get in early on this stuff, um, you, you know, you're the ones that are going to make the most money um, rather than the people that just stick with what they know for the next you know, 10, 20 years, which is going to change. It's not going to stick around. You know, the environment is changing. It's changing rapidly. Uh, and we'll touch on that later on in the webinar. Uh, and also, you know, how you can get started today with property development, because, you know, the best time is now. Um, you know, we're, we're at that time where people are talking about recession and, you know, Armageddon's coming and everything's expensive. Well, this is the time to get yourself educated and learn this stuff. Because if you think back to 2008, 2009, that was the best time to be doing this stuff because you got in at the bottom and, you know, you had a real good um, explosion of growth where, you know, you was making more money by the time you'd done the development. So we're, we're coming into that time now. And, you know, if you learn this stuff now, I think, um, you know, the next year or so is going to present the best opportunities probably that you're going to get for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, and, you know, I will apologise because your mind might just be looking a little bit like that at the end of the webinar because there's going to be some light bulb moments. There's going to be some education um, and your brain might be a bit scrambled. But luckily for you guys, you know, you've got the ability to, to pause and rewind this um, compared to the people that will be watching this on a live stream. Um, what should you do for this webinar? Well, definitely listen very carefully, uh, as this could be life-changing for you and your family. Uh, it's really important that you think about this. You're not just doing it for yourself. You are doing it for you and your family and the, the ones you care for. Uh, have an open mind. So listen till the very end, as I've got something very special for you. But you know, you've definitely got to be listening to this with an open mind and not judging, you know, judging what you see. But just take it all in, sit back, absorb it and learn from it. Um, take plenty of notes throughout the webinar, really important, you know, what gets written down gets done. Uh, I'm a very keen person of sticking to that mantra and, um, you know, the results from writing things down, ticking them off and, and setting goals and, you know, taking notes is definitely different to just, sort of, you know, listening to it while you've probably got, you know, the TV on in the background or the radio in the background or you're on your phone scrolling through. So just, you know, stay focused and take notes throughout the webinar. 
uh, and share what you've learned with others. You know, you know, share this video, um, tag people in, uh, because you know, the more people we can reach, um, the more people's lives we can change through property development. And you know, it's, it's, it's this thing. You know, what I've noticed over the years from hanging around successful people is if they all say, "If I'd have learned this earlier, I could have made money a lot earlier. I could have been doing this earlier. I could have quit my job earlier." Uh, and that's the reality of education and, and you know, this sort of stuff. It's the, the, the sooner we learn this stuff and the sooner we share this stuff, the sooner more people can get into it. So definitely share it with uh, your friends and family in, on your social medias. And you can ask me questions in the comments. So everybody who comments in here, I'll always get back to them, even if, even if it's a negative comment. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a ne negative comment. It's just, you know, whether it's criticism or it's just a, a whatever, you know, I'll still get back to people and um, be polite. Uh, and you know all feedback is welcome but if you've got any questions bung them in the comments uh, and i'll always get back to you and it will be me personally that gets back to you uh, okay and um you know before we move on to the content you know really appreciate it if you support the channel by liking and subscribing and hit the notification bell because we've got lots more videos coming and um, we've got lots of more sites starting this next month so we're going to be doing lots of uh, updates on that and some education stuff and show you you know how we purchased the site how we funded the sites how we get the sites through planning, that sort of thing. So lots of good uh, educational stuff coming in. We have got a Developing Homes Facebook community that you can join. Lots of like-minded people in there. And again, just check me out on my own personal socials as well. So appreciate that if you want to follow me. Okay, so who am I? My name is Andy Hubbard, uh, and I run a company called Developing Homes. Um, I did a, a bricklaying apprenticeship from the age of 16 years old to 19 years old. So it's a three-year course, Peterborough City Council, and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I, I just, well, I just didn't do bricklaying, to be honest. I mean, that's what I came to do, but I ended up doing property maintenance. Um, but it did allow me to learn multiple trades. So, you know, I learned things like roofing and plastering, uh, tiling. We did a bit of slabbing and that sort of stuff. So, you know, it weren't too bad. And I think, you know, it's quite good if you can turn your hands to, to quite a lot of things. Um, but I didn't want to work there for the next 50 years. I saw people come in from who had been there since they're 14. I mean, they started work a lot earlier than, than when I did, but they was retiring at 65 if they lived that long. And within one or two years, they pretty much died. Uh, and it's almost like it's all they knew was work. And I just realized that that wasn't for me, just doing the same thing for 50 years. And then, you know, maybe getting a chance at your retirement if you could afford it and you live that long. So I decided to do things differently. Uh, 19 years old, I walked out of the uh, Peterborough City Council and I said, you know what, I'm never going to be employed ever again. It's just not for me. Being told what to do, when you can do it, when you can have a day off. You know, I was done with school and um, just work wasn't for me, being employed. So, you know, I travelled the world for 13 years. I climbed all the highest mountains around the world. I skied all over the world, cycled all over the world, just took my bike and, and just travelled. And, you know, I managed to do amazing stuff on a, on a little bit of money. And in between that, I'd keep coming back, laying a few bricks, um, going on the sites, so the, the, the job actually, you know, it suited my lifestyle. I had that freedom to come in and earn some good money, graph for seven days a week for maybe three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and then I'd just clear off again until the money ran out. Um, I also worked over Europe for a few years as well on, on campsites, which was pretty amazing. Um, there was no really Monday to Friday, no grind of, you know, waiting for the weekends and then dreading the Mondays. Um, it, was, it was just an amazing stuff to have my retirement while I was young, fit and healthy, uh, and get to do the things I want to do without all the responsibilities of you know mortgages and kids and and that sort of thing. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, but what you know what next? I came back. I had to grow up a little bit. All my friends had been out and bought houses, got cars, and got you know sort of got a bit of money, I suppose. And um, I just thought, you know what? It's time for me to uh, to just settle down for a few years and um, you know do a bit of work uh, and try and stabilize myself. So. I did a lot of building work around people's houses, a lot of garage conversions, did hundreds of these, sort of niched into the um, into the strategy, which was quite good. It was great through the recession when I did come back and chose to sort of work and settle down a little bit, um, you know, because the site work had all dried up anyway. Um, so, yeah, we did we did hundreds of these garage conversions and became very good, typically doing a garage conversion in as little as three and a half days. Um, I think the best ones we did was about three in a week. So that was some going. Um, did a lot of extensions, you know, loads of these. Um, but what I found was people sort of just wanted me because I was multi-skilled and I could do everything. Uh, I was around people's houses for quite a while and um, I just found that, you know, I was doing plastering one day, then I was doing roofing the next and then I was laying all the slabs and was block paving and it just felt like I was forever working and picking up materials and clearing out my van, doing just doing 100 hours a week, crazy. Um, so then I went on back onto sites. They started opening up and I had my own gang. 
and it was good crack. You know, turn up with your bucket of tools, lay some, lay some bricks, earn some good money, um, you know, switch off when you wanted. But we, we still found I was the first one on site and the last one away. Um, I just found that because I was at work and I was earning good money, <clears throat> I just got into that bit of a cycle of just work, 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 work. And, uh, you know, I sort of gave up on all my hobbies and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, OK, I had to make up for a bit of lost time of having all that time off. Um, but you just sort of forgot to how to enjoy yourself. You know, I don't know if some, some of you can relate to that, but I just keep going to work, you know, Monday to Sunday because it's like what we enjoy doing. But you sort of think, well, hold on, there is a life out there and um, I'm missing out on it. <clears throat> so just a few years ago, um, that was me. That's what I would look like after a typical day of work. I mean, my wife's there. She's come to, uh, to help me on a job. Uh, and the reason for that is because I used to work sort of 100 hours a week on the tools. Now, when I say on the tools... Um, I wasn't working on the tools 100 hours a week, <clears throat> but some of you will relate to this, especially if you're a tradesman. Um, you know, you probably do 50 hours a week on the tools. Then the other 50 hours would be, be consumed of um, fetching materials, pricing up jobs, invoicing, paying trades, doing building regs, cleaning your van out. Um, you know, just constant, constant work alongside the work, physical work of working on the tools. So my wife used to come to work just to see me. Um, and then, you know, I just sort of say, well, let, you know, rather than just stand there and look at me, you might as well pick up a shovel and uh, I'll get on a dumper and, and start helping me on the tool. So that's what she did. So she ended up starting to come to work with me. And, um, you know, it, it was OK, but it's not really what I, it wasn't our sort of long term plan. Um, one thing I did do, well, I was suffering from bad, bad back pain and, it, you know, it wasn't getting any better. And um, I've got a couple of worn discs out. In fact, I've got disappeared discs in my back. Uh, I'm all, I'm okay now. I'm not pain free now because I don't do what I used to do. But at the time, you know, I'm sort of um, in my forties, and I'm thinking, wow, you know, is this it? I just can't seem to get rid of this back pain. I'm working all the time. I don't have any rest, uh, and it, yeah, it was making my life pretty miserable. Uh, I, you know, one thing I did do when I reached out to a mentor, um, he said to me, look, you know, uh, you're trading time for money, and I'd never heard that phrase before. You know, trading your time for money. And it makes sense, you know, whether you're on an hourly rate, a day rate, or even a price, you are still trading your time for money. And one of the things that I wanted when I went to my mentor was um, I wanted to earn more money. And he said, well, you can't. And I said, well, what do you mean I can't? He said, well, you've run out of hours. He said, you've run out of time. You haven't got any more time left to trade to earn any more money. And, I, it, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, you know, no pun intended. But I thought, yeah, he's right. I can't. The reason I can't ever get beyond earning what I'm earning is because I've just, you know, I've run out of hours. Um, so little things like that were real light bulb moments for me when I, you know, when I got into personal development and mentoring. I started to notice that customers were ungrateful. Uh, and again, I'm sure if you, some of you trades are out there working around customers all the time, you know, they seem to know the law, as they say. They know how to plaster better than you. And, you know, they, they built their own house a few years ago. And, you know, they've always done something for 10 minutes, but they're all, you know, they're, they're better than your 25, 30 years of experience of what you're doing. Uh, even though they're sitting there with their Ryobi tools and stuff like that, and uh, but they know, you know, they are the experts. And um, I just had enough of it, you know, coming into work and they were sort of saying, oh, you know, this isn't right, and it's we hadn't even finished a job. Uh, and you know, we used to do a good job. You know, we we did way above and beyond what most trades and contractors would. We would do a lot of work for free. You know, so if they say, oh, you know, the older, can you just? Um, so we would often do a lot of stuff and not even charge them. And then, you know, I can hand on heart say, I've never ever asked a customer for more money after I've given them a price, you know, and I'm probably one of the rare few people out there that have ever done that. If I give them a price, that is it. You know, I know, I know my craft pretty well, uh, but I'm not in the nature of asking someone for more money. If, um, you know, if we're running out of money or whatever, that's not down to the customer to, to dip their hand in the pocket. They've come to us for, for a price, but it just seemed that, you know, we was doing a real good job. We was on a fixed price and it just felt like we were getting treat Like we were trying to rip people off and do a, a crap job. And that's, you know, that sort of, I took, took it personally, I, I, you know, didn't really deserve it. Um, I had no time to spend with the family. I got two young boys at the time. Um, I was getting up for work, gone to, gone to work before they even got out of bed, come back in from work, you know, sort out my van, walk in the house at sort of 10 o'clock at night, everyone's in bed. And I had an hour sort of vegetating in front of the TV. I mean, my wife used to talk to me and I never even used to listen, probably the odd grunt. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, you know, no time with the family. And even if it was, it wasn't quality time. No time for hobbies. I've got a lot of uh, expensive hobbies that I like to do. Um, I, you know, I'm looking that I can do them now, but back at that time, just didn't have no time to go and play golf, do a bit of fishing, even go to the gym. 
Um, so it was, it was just work, work, work. Um, but this was the big thing for me. You know, I started to fall asleep at the wheel driving home. Uh, and a couple of times I did fall asleep at the wheel, ended up in a field. Um, you know, where we live out, we're, we're quite rural. So there's quite some bendy roads and pitch black, no street lights. And um, yeah, just a couple of times I'd wake up and, you know, the van was just trundling across the field. And, it's, and there's a lot of dikes where I live. And, you know, luckily I hadn't ended in a dike. And I just thought, you know what? I've got two young boys at home uh, and a wife, and it's my responsibility to, you know, house them, feed them, clothe them, give them security. And, you know, there's going to be a time where I'm going to come home and, um, you know, I'm not going to make it home or, you know, worse, even even kill somebody else, you know, who's innocently driving. So it was a big wake up, you know, big wake up call for me. Um, I felt like I was on a treadmill with no way off. Uh, and, you know, ultimately, I've just become a grumpy old git. My wife probably still saying I am, um, but I'd like to contest that. Uh, but no, you know, I was I was getting a bit, a bit miserable um, because I, was, I wasn't happy. Simple as that. Uh, and again, maybe some of you can relate to that. You know, when you're working hard and working hard for your family, um, you can just get a bit sort of miserable thinking, well, is this it? You know, is this it for the next 10, 20, 30 years? Back pain, all these hours, you know, customers complaining, no time for hobbies, no time to spend doing what I want to do. Uh, you will become a bit miserable, and that's that's not that's not me, and that's most likely not you either. Um, but you know, things had to change. It was simple as that. You know, things had to change. I just couldn't carry on doing what I was doing. Uh, you know, lots of you will relate to feeling like this. Doesn't matter whether you're in a job working for a boss you don't like. Um, you know, maybe a landlord with loads of tenants, and uh, maybe you're a tradesperson. You know, you're not going to want to carry on doing what you're doing forever. So you know, something's got to change. Um, my mentor said to me, you know, like, don't spend energy or time on things you cannot change. And the last few years have been very challenging for a few people. We've still got a couple more challenging years ahead of us. Um, you know, we've, we've got Brexit, for instance. Um, you know, people complaining about Brexit. It's like, you can't change Brexit. It's done. People voted. And you, you've just got to let it play its course. And, you know, it is what it is. COVID-19 was another one. You know, so many people complaining about COVID and complaining about wearing masks and things being shut. You know, complaining, blaming and justifying, as Grant Cardone says, doesn't get you anywhere. It's not, it's not a strategy. So you've just got to be conscious that, you know, do not complain, blame or justify. Uh, the war in Ukraine, you know, obviously it's caused people a lot of problems. It's, it's a knock on effect for, for everyone around the world. It's, it's, <clears throat> you know, it's horrible. I can't believe that something like that can happen in, in today's age, just like COVID. You know, I couldn't believe that they could shut the country down. But it just shows that, you know, there's always something possible. You know, you never just never know what's around the corner. And there's always going to be something in the next couple of years or five years or 10 years that's going to disrupt something and we have no control over it. So we don't want to get into the debates down the pub uh, and get tangled up into arguments. And, you know, we just want to, what we want to do is focus on what we can change and focus on ourselves and our families. Uh, the weather is another one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, you can't change the weather. Uh, you know, I do like it when it's nice weather because I'm an outside sort of person, but you know, I've learned to live with the elements and um, or, or do different things when the elements are doing different things. So, but we can't change the weather. Uh, and I did spend years, you know, complaining about it. We live in the UK. I mean, you know, four seasons in one day is quite normal, isn't it? And fuel prices. I mean, at the minute we're experiencing, you know, crazy fuel prices. And I see people doing screenshots of their, how much it's costing to put up in, in a tank. You can't change that. You know, you need fuel to get to work. You've just probably got to make a few different decisions on, you know, whether you leave your car running with the aircon on because it's too hot or leave the, the car running just to warm it up for 10 minutes before you get in it in the morning uh, and make those unnecessary journeys to the shop. You know, get on your bike, walk, whatever, use some public transport, cut down on your fuel and, and do a bit of good for the environment. But you cannot change this stuff. So don't, don't waste any of your time uh, on anything you cannot change. Now, who feels like life is like this? Uh, you know, and I've put... A, a, a quote there you know what life you know some of you may not feel like you've even got a life and I certainly did feel like that a few years ago you know work-life balance it was not a work-life balance it was all just work 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 um, and this is another one you know who feels like they're on the hamster wheel you know work sleep repeat work sleep repeat and there are so many people like I say you know Monday they can't wait till Friday Sunday they're already dreading going back to work on Monday that is not the good way to live your life uh, and you can change that, and I'll show you how some of the people I've worked with have changed theirs uh, and got off that hamster wheel of life. And uh, the other one is Groundhog Day. You know, who feels like every single day is the same thing? You get up, do the same thing, eat the same thing, go to the same place of work, moan about the same stuff, 
you know, and it's just like that is just a depressing environment. You know, you, you're not going to live a, full, a fulfilled life if you're living life as a Groundhog Day. Um, you've really got to break that mold. So just a few things, because I'm sure there's some people listening to this that do feel like that, uh, but you can change it. And I'm going to show you how, uh, how you can change it. So something had to change, and that started with me. Um, you know, one reason people resist change is because they focus on what they have to give up instead of what they have to gain. So, you know, I go to the gym most mornings and I'm normally up at 5.01. That's what time my alarm goes off, seven days a week. And I'm in there for six. And, I, I, you know, what, what do I have to give up? Well, I have to give up my laying. You know, some people just, it's religious to have a lay-in. Well, especially on a weekend. But for me, it's like, no, if I want to gain something or improve something, Something has to give up. I have to, uh, I have to sacrifice something. And, um, you know, I'm giving up, you know, sometimes I feel tired because of doing physical work. But it's like, no, I've got my goals. Uh, I've got my personal development. I want to keep improving, physical. And, you know, sometimes you've got to give up stuff. And that's why most people do not change their lives because they have to give up something. They might have to give up some time. They might have to give up watching, you know, EastEnders to go, to, uh, to go out and do a walk that will benefit them or something like that. And they just, they just don't want to do it. So if you see people st stuck still, or you may be one of these people that's stuck still in life, maybe just think about the, the, the things that you're not, you know, or you feel like you're not prepared to give up and might say, well, actually, is it worth giving up that to go and get benefit from that? And 99% of the time, it usually is. So, you know, I'd started doing lots of work for, for customers and um, I've been on the site work and it, is, it was okay, very, very busy. But when I reached out to, uh, to get mentoring and education, one of the first things I started to do was build a portfolio because, you know, while I've been traveling for 13 years, uh, lots of my friends and families, their houses had doubled and doubled again. And I was like, wow, you know, if I'd have just bought property back then, um, it would have been worth this now. And um, so I bought some houses and, you know, these are not the nicest houses, as you can see. But I, I understood that you don't buy the nicest house to get the best rent. So you're looking for the sweet spot of the worst house to get the, you know, to get the best rent for putting the least amount of money in. Um, but, you know, I built a portfolio, replaced my income, and I became, you know, there's more properties than, than this one, but I became financially free uh, in a relatively quick quick pace of time. And I sort of thought, well, that's okay, isn't it? I've done it, you know, I've replaced my income. I don't need to go to work anymore, but I was still working all the hours, you know, so it wasn't really the money that was the issue. Um, you know, it was, it was way beyond that. Um, and, you know, I've replaced my income, but then or had I, because, you know, I'd run out of money. Um, I couldn't buy any more properties. That was one thing. I put all my, you know, all my deposits in and all the money I'd gone, gone into refurbs and maintenance and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, everyone does this at some point. So it doesn't matter if you're starting out with 50 grand to build your portfolio or 500, you will run out of money at some point. Uh, as fast as the income came in, it went out with, you know, new boilers, voids, refurbs, maintenance, tenants not paying, management fees, accountancy fees. So, you know, you make about sort of three, three, three to four grand a, a year off each property, which is nice. But the minute the boiler breaks down or, or it's, it's broken, the minute that a tenant stops paying rent, the minute that they've moved out after a couple of years and you've got to fully refurb the property, it's just wiping out your profit, you know, wiping out your profits or as quick as they come in. Um, so yeah, it's almost like you've got to earn double or triple to be able to get the same money, uh, you know, is what you're expecting. Um, but you know, because I was still busy working, I'd almost created myself a, uh, more work and a job. You know, so much for passive income. I didn't want to spend my time managing tenants. I was already working, you know, 100 hours a week. The last thing I needed was a job, you know, showing tenants in and out, doing viewings, doing maintenance, because um, I just didn't phys physically have the time. And, you know, how many properties would I really need to live the life I wanted? You know, 20, 30, 40. Well, it's actually about 70. Uh, and then what I've done is I've put a financial freedom figure there of £17,648 a month. Now, some of you will be thinking, well, that's a crazy amount. You don't need that amount of money to live on a month. Well, let me explain. That figure arrives from me creating a spreadsheet and putting down the cars I want, the house I want, like all the mortgage and the bills, the villa, the holidays, so the ski holidays, the fishing holidays, the Ducati, etc. And I've broken all that down, and it does work out to £17,648 a month, uh, so £211,776 per annum. Uh, and that gets me the life I want. So that gets me as all the holidays I want, the cars, the houses, you know, broken down. I, I can I can have financial freedom and live for, for sort of a couple hundred grand a year. And that's going to take 70 properties, uh, an average of £250 of cash flow a month. Now, I know you can earn more than that sometimes, but I'm talking about, you know, taking into fact of, of boiler repairs and management fees and all this sort of stuff. So 70 properties 
that's going to take me a long time to, to, to get. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm about to turn 50 next year and I haven't got a lot of years to go and get 70 properties. You know, and by the time I get them, I'll probably need 100 properties. Uh, by the time I get 100, I'll probably need 120. So, and the last thing I need to do is, is create myself a job. So, the, you know, there had to be a better way. Uh, and there was. Uh, and for me, it was property developing, new builds. You know, I've been doing this for developers for years. Um, I was the one on site on the cold, wet, you know, mid, uh, winter months. And, you know, the, the developer would pull up in his Range Rover, um, just about to fly off to Barbados for the winter or go skiing or go off to the villa in, in, in Spain in the summers. And I just thought, wow, you know, what what an amazing life those guys have. But I haven't got millions of pounds to to do anything like this and I wouldn't even know where to start. So I just continued to be the bricklayer on site, uh, you know, building the houses and they were making the most profit. Um, but, you know, I started to ask myself the questions, you know, where would I find the land if I was going to be a developer? I mean, I didn't know where, you, where these developers found the land. And I'm sure some of you just drive by a field one day and the next thing, you know, the, the fencing's up and the diggers in there. And you think, well, well, I didn't see that for sale. You know, how the hell on earth would you buy that? Um, you know, where would I find the money? I certainly didn't have millions of pounds. And you don't need millions of pounds, but that was my perception. I always just thought you needed millions of pounds. And when I learned, you know, got myself educated, I soon realised that you can do this stuff without any money or certainly very little money. Um, where would I find good builders? You know, I had a high standard of work. Uh, I, I, f I struggled to find people that could do stuff as good as me. So, you know, even though I'm not a plumber, my plumbing was better than sort of 90% of plumbers out there. And it shouldn't be because, you know, I'm not a plumber, but I've got this standard of work where it's either right or it's wrong. Um, what about the planning process? You know, most of the customers I'd work for um, had already got planning in place. Most of the developers I'd work for had already got their developments in in place so I didn't really understand the planning process and you know we always think it's a bit risky don't we but it's certainly not uh, and how much does everything cost you know it's okay working on projects for you know 5, 10, 15 maybe 20, 25, 30 thousand pounds but when you start working on developments that are going to be you know 500, a million, 2 million that's, that's a different ball game to costing up a project and you know understanding what these things are going to cost and where you're going to get the money from so but you know most of these questions are, are no different than when I or you you know first started building our portfolios same sort of thing where we're going to find the properties you know where we're going to find the money where we're going to find the builders to come and do the refurb so you know no different questions just a different strategy um, the biggest change for me was you know a few years ago um, I did take a day off work and I went on a free day uh, property development um, uh, education sort of event and I, it was the first day I took off work for, for years you know because I was going to lose my day's pay for starters because I'm on a price work and um, I nearly never went I almost thought you know what nah I can't be bothered and one thing I've learned is that if it, if you know if you don't pay for it you don't value it uh, so it's quite common for people to book on these things and just never turn up because they haven't paid so you know, those that commit the money turn up and they're the ones that go on to do and get the results. Um, but anyway, I went on the three day event and it blew me away. It honestly blew me away. I mean, I like the event that much. I did 25 of them. So that's that's how much it changed me in my life. And um, it just opened up my eyes. It, it made me realize that, you know, you can change and, you know, you can go and be different and, and achieve what others have achieved. So I invested heavily into my mentorship. There's me and my mentors on the left with, with Robert Mark. Um, in the you know above there we're having dinner in the in the Cayman Islands at the Ritz Hotel. Uh, for those of you that like Grant Cardone, there's me at the 10x in Miami. You know, the, I mean these are the sort of investments I made. I, I went to the Cayman Islands. I went to Miami to see Grant Cardone. You know, most people won't even bother picking up a book. You know, even if they got it for free. Whereas for me, I was I was serious about my education and, and, and personal development. Um, there's me, you know, a bit higher up to the right, having a one-to-one -one with, with Rob. So one-to-one -one mentoring sessions are, are fantastic. Uh, really get your, get your chance to guide you and help you build your business and where you want to go in life. Um, and again, this is something that I never, ever thought would be possible. There's me at the bottom there with Naveed. Uh, he's a billionaire. Uh, he's doing, like, interesting things on the moon, you know, way beyond most people's mindset and capabilities. But that's how billionaires think. And I just never, ever thought I'd even you know, get talking to millionaires, yeah, alone multimillionaires and, and billionaires. And, um, you know, it, I had some, some pretty quick success uh, and I went on to write a chapter uh, in, in Mark Stokes' book, Advice to Your Younger Self. So this is, you know, what advice would you give to your younger self if you could go back 20, 30 years or something? And uh, it was, you know, great to be able to give back a bit like that and, and help younger people, which I'm passionate about. Uh, I managed to get featured in y, YPN magazine. 
um, your property network magazine because of um, the results I was getting. There's me at the top right there of Alfie Best worth 750 million, big park home uh, ownership person. Me at the bottom there with Dr. John Demartini, uh, amazing guy for his age. He's nearly 70, but you know acts like 20, physically like 20, and um, he's got some energy. But really made me understand my values and vision. You know, it's something I never really even thought about. Um, but I never stopped. I kept continuing with it for, for several years. And uh, there's me and Gerald Ratner in Dubai. You know, Gerald Ratner, for those that don't know, you know, he, he was one of the biggest jewelers in Britain. Well, he was the biggest jeweler in Britain. Uh, and he said one comment uh, at, a, at a sort of annual meeting where, you know, his stuff was crap and it just killed the business. Um, but he went from, you know, everything back to nothing, back to everything. Uh, and you can learn a lot from people like that. Uh, and again, I'm back out in the Cayman Islands, 10X. I took my wife back to 10X again. This time we went to Vegas. Um, I got speaking on stage. as me with Tony Hadley from Spandale Ballet. You know, why Tony Tony Hadley? Well, you know, he's made his money and he does a lot of charity work. And it's made me realise that, you know, you've got to give back once you start making money. Uh, and if you've got that in your vision to give back and help people and raise money for charity, it's definitely going to get you through the tough times. Um, so, you know, giving back is, is really a, a purposeful thing in your life. Uh, and there's me with Bradley. Uh, he owns a company called Lightspeed, so online education, online training. Um, you know, fantastic guy, what he's doing and, and, you know, his products are there so that he can reach the world and, and get people benefiting from their education and going out and, you know, bettering their lives and making more money. Um, but, you know, what changed? What's, you know, what changed for me to go from working 100 hours a week with back pain and not seeing my family and having no time for hobbies um, to just, you know, rucking up in my Range Rover on my own sites? This was always the vision, you know, getting all the work done by other people. Uh, well, you know, the only thing that changed, it, you know, I did. It's as simple as that because, you know, remember, we can't change Brexit. We can't change the fuel prices. We can't change, you know, uh, COVID. But we can change our own mindset. And we can change what we do on an hourly, daily or weekly, monthly basis. You know, we, we have the, um, the ability to say yes or no. And, uh, you know, one thing I will say to anybody listening to this is you are where you are because of what you say yes and no to. So, you know, if you're working for a really horrible customer, for example, you're there because you've said yes. You know, that's, that is your own fault. Uh, and you've got to start being very, very conscious as what you say yes or no to. You know, are you saying, yes, I'm going to watch EastEnders or are you going to say, yes, I'm going to sit down and educate myself on, you know, on YouTube or something like that for an hour. You know, one of those is a better use of your time uh, and one of those will put money into your pocket and money, one of those will take money out of your pocket. So be very conscious what you say yes and no to. You know, if anything you take away from this webinar today uh, is that. Uh, you know, and you can change also. I think if you're working for customers, if you're building extensions, if you're refurbishing houses, doing property maintenance, trade, you know, if you're a tradesman on site like I was, uh, house conversion, so if you're converting house into HMOs, got good DIY skills, your project manager for somebody, you know, you can change what you're doing and turn those skills and monetize those skills uh, into something far more profitable, you know, freeing up your time uh, and giving the life you want. And it's not going to be, you know, much different work, but it's, it's just going to be completely different results. So what's my lifestyle like now? Um, like I said, you know, I'll pull up on my own sites. Uh, I don't have anybody telling me what to do, when, when I can do it, when I can take a day off. You know, I get to drive my car that I've always wanted, never ever you know, thought I'd be able to get that. And I, I paid cash for that car. Again, you know, years ago, that would have been as much as a house. Uh, and it was just, you know, I couldn't have even thought about doing something like that. Um, I get to teach a lot of people to do the same thing because a lot of people want the same results. And the easiest way to get the same results is to copy somebody that's doing it. Um, you know, some of my rooms, you know, 70 people, all my events sell out. Um, because you know they see me teaching what I'm doing and that's key here you know if you're going to learn from somebody you know do go and get it you know do look and learn from somebody who's been there got the t-shirt and you know and read the book um, and then we do mentoring days you know I take some of my mentees to to factories so there's, there's the mentees coming to my timber frame supplier so they can see you know the, the benefits of why we use certain systems and I can put them in touch with my contacts they get access to my black book of contacts uh, as, as a mentee uh, I get to run retreats in amazing places. So there's one we're doing in, in Vegas. We've just done one in Tenerife. We've got another one in Tenerife next year and another one that we're organising, um, maybe, maybe Cyprus or Croatia next year, somewhere like that. Um, but, you know, we take people away for a whole week, take them away from the grind, all the noise, and we sit down and we say, right, this is your week 
to, to concentrate on you. You know, where do you want to be in five, ten years time? And we reverse engineer the plan and we break it down into one, three, five year goals uh, and action steps. And, um, you know, we, we make we go through everything. So they've got the decisions and we say, right now, you know exactly what to say yes and no to and what to work on. Uh, and, you know, the results come. You know, once you've got these plans in place, the results come. It's just a matter of time. So, the, the, you know, really powerful with the retreats. Uh, and then, you know, there's me on one of my other sites uh, with, with some mentees. They come to my sites and we show them around the sites and show them how we set them up, how they run, talk about material costs, utilities, planning and all this sort of stuff. You know, how we negotiated it with the vendors, how we funded them. So those site visits are really valuable. And that, that's a typical, you know, a month's work for me. You know, I'm, I'm sort of really, really living a, an amazing life. Um, but, you know, I now get time to, uh, to travel a lot. So wherever I go, my bike comes with me. Uh, I take it on the planes and, you know, it always flies around with me. That's that's the law, as I say to my wife. Um, you get to go to amazing destinations. There's me flying over the palm in Dubai. Again, you know, never even thought I'd go to places like that. And, you know, it's great to go and hang around and with, you know, really wealthy people and, and aspire to to work harder in your life and, and get these things that you never thought would be possible as a, as a bricklayer from Peterborough. Uh, I play golf all over the world now. You know, I've just been playing in Morocco, played Thailand, Dubai, America, we're playing Canaries every year, me and my sons. We're going to go golf next year um, to Turkey. So we get to play golf all over the world. I get to fish all over the world now. You know, there's me fishing in Thailand where the fish are bigger than me. Uh, amazing experience. You know, those, those holidays are not cheap. You know, that's a lot of money to go fishing places like that. And you need the, um, you know, you need the strategy to be able to let you do this. Um, I get to drive amazing cars. You know, again, you know, we go away and we hire cars. Um, cars I never even thought I would even you know sit in yet alone drive um, but that, that's amazing we ski all over the world as well every year we go skiing several times um, there's me and my wife just in a hot air balloon in Morocco <clears throat> you know good experiences we we get to do all these sort of things and the benefit of this of what we do is we don't have to sit there and question whether we can afford to go and I'm not bragging there I'm not you know I'm not trying to sound big-headed but you know if you've got to think about making that decision because of cost the reality is you can't afford it you know, that, that is the reality. So you've got to get yourself into a position where you can just go and do something because you want to do it and you can do it. Uh, there's me, you know, been to a, to do the Marathon de Sable in Morocco. Uh, and I got several things out of doing this. So one is I went there to raise a lot of money for cancer research because, um, you know, I lost my father-in-law to cancer last year, unfortunately. And, you know, I want to try and give back and help people. Um, but it was about the mindset because I'm not a runner by any means. And I, the only training I'd done before that was was one park run. And this is the toughest foot race on earth. Uh, and I completed it. You know, lots of people quit, um, didn't even make the start line because they had a little niggle in the knee, whatever, made excuses. For me, I'd already got that medal before the minute I signed up for it. You know, and that's this is the, the, the power of your mindset uh, of when you learn this stuff in personal development. It's like you can already see the result before you've even done it. And, you know, I knew I was going to finish that uh, race uh, and I didn't come last. I didn't come first. I knew I was never going to come first. But I did it and I raised the money. I got the medal. Uh, and it just proved to me that, you know, if you set yourself a goal, set yourself the mindset and, you you know, you know what needs to be done to get you over that line, you can achieve anything you ever want. So uh, that's why I did it. We've got another one that we're going to do next year with my son, similar sort of thing. Um, there's me and my family again. We was just in a, a lodge just recently, just in Lincolnshire doing a bit of fishing. But... You know, we're able to do this stuff. We're able to get all of our family together and pay for them. Um, you know, it's just it's the stuff dreams are made of. Uh, and I've just come back from fishing in France. Uh, and again, if you look on my social media, you'll see I've got a pretty nice lifestyle of traveling around and, and living quite a nice life from what we do. So, you know, that's life now. Very different because remember, you know, just a few years ago, I never had time for any of this. Um, I was just working, working, working. So, um, you know, amazing to what you can achieve in a few years and how quick it can change. Um, but, you know, what other strategies are there out there? Because we obviously do property development. So let's look at some of the other strategies. And I, I just don't think these are going to probably get you to where you want to be, depending on where you want to be, obviously. But let's look at buy to let. This is the most obvious uh, strategy that most people are going to want to get into. It's the starting starting point for most people. But you know, there's a good demand for renting houses. I think there's more renters now than buyers. I think it's like 51% renters to 49% buyers. I think uh, might be wrong on that, but it's somewhere around that mark. It, it changed last year. Um but you've got to put in big deposits and, you know, even if you're going to buy, refurbish, refinance, it's very hard to get all your money out. So you are going to run out of money at some point. And the lending criteria is still very tough, uh, which I think is a good thing. You know, I think the banks had to tighten the belts after recession. 
and you know make sure they weren't giving money to everybody because you know obviously they couldn't pay it back. So I think that's a good thing, and they've stuck to their word, and I think that's been a, a great thing going forward. Um, but when you run out of money, you're most likely going to end up doing joint ventures, and then you're going to split your profits by fifty percent. So you know if you're making three hundred pound a month cash flow, and you've got to go fifty fifty on that. That's a lot of work to go and buy a house, do all the work, let it, manage it for £150 a month that you're going to get taxed on. You know, that to me, that is that is not a strategy. You're going to need hundreds and hundreds of them properties and then you're going to have a job on a half. You know, you really are. You, you Probably 100 hours a week would be part-time for some of you guys doing that. Uh, and I've got people with big portfolios, some friends, you know, they've got 30, 40, 50, 100 houses. And honestly, every single one of them would almost automatically say, look, you know, if I could hand the keys in, uh, and walk away from it, I would do, but they can't because they're going to have massive capital gains tax bills. Um, so you know, even though some of these guys are earning fifteen, twenty grand a month, it, it's not all uh, you know singing and dancing for them. It's it's just a headache. Phones con- continually ringing, people setting fire to properties, you know, not paying the rent. Oh, it, it, they have some nightmares. Um, but the more properties you get, the more headaches that come with it. So you know, you are going to get more voids, maintenance, chasing more rents, boiler breakdowns, etc. And legislation changed, you know, section 24, so no claiming of mortgage relief, meaning some landlords will be paying more tax than what they earn. So, you know, if you're earning £300 a month and you're paying probably 50% tax because it takes you into the higher tax bracket, again, it's, you know, who wants to pay 50% tax? You know, not really. Uh, Not on such a small return either. So, you know, how many properties will you need to live the life you want? It's definitely worth sitting down and trying to write out that figure. Like I said, for me, it was it was 70. So once I realised the figure, I realised that that was not the strategy for me because it's just never going to get there. Uh, HMOs. So HMOs is normally like your next progressive step up. Uh, they can be great for cash flow. We've got some HMOs. They are good. Um, lots more management involved, but we do have an agency that manages them all. Um, so we don't really have you know many, many really phone calls and many problems. And, and they do all the maintenance for us. We just pay it. Um, but you know, you're going to need quite a few of them. It's, there's a lot of areas that are becoming very oversaturated, you know, so you've got to think about this depending on where you are, if you are going to do HMOs, because the last thing you want is, you know, go out and get the property, get six rooms already, all en suited, all furniture, and then the next thing, you, you know, you haven't got the tenants and you're going to start dropping your rents. And um, certainly in Peterborough, near where I live, you're having to make the, the houses higher spec because of competition. Now, like I said, you are going to get some landlords that are going to come in there where, they just spend a fortune on these houses, you know, the, the fastest of broadband, the biggest of TVs, the nicest beds, the nicest furnitures, and that's your competition, uh, you know, and the, the only way you're going to do that is to either compete with the furniture and spend a fortune, or you're going to drop your rents to get them to come in there and say, well, actually, I know it's not quite so nice, but it is £100 a month cheaper, which is going to eat into your profit. Uh, and, you, you know, you don't really want to do that. So, you know, again, if you're in an oversaturated area, you are going to be dropping your rents to, just to keep tenants in there to pay your bills. Now, there's lots of new purpose-built student accommodation being built all over the country, which means lots of HMOs are coming up for sale now. Uh, So there's almost like a flood of these properties in some areas. Um, Because why would you want to go and live in an old, you know, 1930s Victorian house when you can go and live in a, a, you know, perfectly nice student hall or purpose-built, you know, um, service accommodation? And again, this is the, the big one, legislation change coming for council tax per room. It is already here in a lot of areas. You know, so if you're paying all the bills, like electric water council tax, and then next thing you've got to pay it per six unsuited rooms, you know, if you're earning six, seven, eight hundred pounds a month and you're going to start paying six lots of council tax, it's literally just wiped all your profit out. And then you're managing a property for zero, zero rent. Uh, again, not a good strategy. It's not going to it's not going to give you the financial freedom that you have to, you're after. Uh, a lot of people are getting into strategy. I mean, it can be a great strategy, service accommodation. I think people get into this one. Um, because they can provide a really, really nice looking house. And they, they get that's what they get attached to. A lot of these strategies, people are not sitting there with their business heads on. They are sitting there with the uh, emotional goggles on, as we call them. And, you know, what would you rather have? Like a, an old vanilla wall, sort of, you know, single plane, boring, buy to let? Or would you rather have a real nice service accommodation house that you've done and it almost looks like a hotel boutique? You know, well, it's obvious, but one of them's going to be, you know, more profitable than the other uh, and less management, etc. So, it is great, but it's becoming very competitive. You know, wherever there's lots of competition, there is uh, the only way you know forward is either to improve your services with more money investment or to reduce your rates. Uh, and I was always told you won't get rich when you're competing. It's as, it's as simple as that. You know, you won't make a lot of money when you're competing with competition. So because the only way is you cut your, you cut your prices to get those rooms filled. 
Uh, like I say, it's a lot of money spending the setup. You're going to leave money in your properties. You drop in room rates to fill your rooms. And again, legislation change, 90 day rule. Will this be rolled out across the UK? Who knows? You know, it's had a big effect on hotels, which means job losses. And the government, you know, once they learn uh, enough people are doing this strategy, that's when they step in and start hitting it heavily with the tax taxation, just like they did on the buy to lets. Uh, and this is the this is the big one. You don't learn this on a, on a lot of training courses. Where you know, once you get to a certain threshold, you're going to start paying VAT. Now you can't just start charging your room rate plus VAT. What it means is that you'll just have to start sucking up a twenty percent VAT surcharge within your room rate night. So if you're making a twenty percent profit, and then the next thing you've hit a certain threshold, well, you you again you you're renting out properties for for zero. You know, people don't teach you this stuff. Uh, and they have to find out the hard way. And then they realise they've got three or four properties and then that's it. They can't really expand the business. They're, they're just capped off by this uh, VAT stuff. Uh, lots of credit card fraud out there. So lots of payments getting you know refused and, and people doing chargebacks and you know saying that their, their card was used fraudulent after you, after the win the stage of your accommodation. Do you want to be dealing with that and try and you know, get your money back from Visa and MasterCard? It's going to be a challenge. So you are going to get this and... You know, of course, you get someone saying they're going to book in, they're a nice elderly couple, and the next thing you got a stag and a Hindu in there, you know, 20 people crashing the whole house. So, again, so, you know, I see so many horror stories on, on social media of people showing apartments that are trashed and drug use, and, you know, a lot of them using for, for prostitutes uh, and stuff like that. So, not not, not, not one for me, to be honest. Uh, huge amount of management involved, you know, do you want a job? You know, with all these strategies... You have got to sit there and say, what am I trying to create? Am I trying to create more money? That's great. Most people are. But are you trying to create another job? You know, do you want to sit there managing stuff all your life? Do you want to be able to go on holiday and not have the phone ringing? You know, do you want to go on there and relax and just switch off or, or concentrate on your business like they do on the retreat? Or do you want to have to constantly be having phone calls and, you know, continually working? No, for me, I don't. Some of you might want to do that. But just think about that when you're looking at these other strategies. Uh, and you know, do you want to be there? You know, like I said, the phone ringing eleven o'clock at night. You know, someone can't get in because they can't get the keys. What are you going to do about it when you're on your family holiday? You know, these are sort of things that do happen. Uh, and you know, coronavirus did stop a lot of service accommodation bookings completely. So you know, I know people that have lost their whole houses and everything, lost the whole businesses because of coronavirus. Well, like I said earlier that you know, I never thought this would happen in our lifetime where they could stop you flying out of the country and shut everything down, but. It just shows it's possible and you never know whether there's going to be a coronavirus 2022, coronavirus 2023, you know. So again, it's putting all your eggs in one basket and it could just come to a complete standstill through no fault of your own. So rent to rent, um, it's a, uh, again, it's, it's quite a good strategy. Uh, it's low entry, which means that, you know, because you haven't got to buy property and credit ratings and all this sort of stuff, there's going to be a lot more competition in a, in a low entry strategy. Um, it's quite hard to get the deals for the agents because it's just trying, you know, quite hard to get them to understand what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, you may have to convince the landlord to let you turn their house into HMO to increase the cash flow. You know, that's hard. You know, to be able to go in there and start knocking someone's property about and you know saying that you're going to rent six rooms out instead of two, and you know you're trying to sort of lie to them saying it's corporate lets when it's not. Um, so you know, it's quite a tricky one. Um, you don't own the asset which means no legacy, you know, could affect cash flow in three or four years time if you've got three or four year, le year leases and all those landlords decide to take their properties back. Um, for, you know, for me, it is about creating a legacy for my kids as well. So, you know, like I say, rent to rent uh, doesn't allow you to achieve that. <clears throat> is it really a business? You know, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, you know, it's questionable for me. It's not certainly not a business from my point of view. Uh, and again, you know, how many of these do you need to live your life? Because if I had 70 buy to lets, I'm in control when I, if I want to sell them, put the rents up, etc. If I've got 70 rent to rents, they could all be took away from me in a matter of a couple of years and then you're back to square one with zero. So just think about that. Um, <clears throat> deal packaging. Uh, again, it's a great strategy. It's very low entry, so it's crowded strategy. Uh, the market is steady with green shoots, but you know, not too many motivated sellers. But that is all about to probably change over the next year or two. So it could come into its own. Um, but you know, why would you sell a deal with a twenty-five percent discount for you to only make three grand? You know, it seems a bit crazy, doesn't it? If you're negotiating a hundred and fifty grand house, you know, down to like a hundred and twenty or something like that, um, and you only get three grand for it, that's not a lot of commission for saving that person a lot of money. So. Uh, yeah, you know, it is hard to find the right deal for the right investor at the right time. So it's all about timing with this stuff. You you know you sit in the middle between the deal and the investor. 
you know, you've got to find the right investor at the right time who's ready to go. Uh, and typically, lots of investors will pull out of deals because they take a long time. You know, solicitors are very slow, very busy at the minute, um, and investors want to get the money into something. And you know, if they're talking to somebody else who can deliver quicker than you, they could just pull the rug, you know, last minute. Uh, and I think this is the key one, you know, with the, with the training stuff. Um, you, they, you know, they say sell one deal a month and replace your income, and it's you know probably three grand a month, but. You know, you can't time it that you sell one deal every single 28 days and you get that money in your bank. You know, you might sell two one month, nothing for four months because they drag on for whatever reason. Um, so it's it's not for me. It's, I personally don't think it's a, it's the best cash flow model uh, unless you really do nail it and you do have multiple deals coming in. But, you know, like I say, that's each to their own. Uh, the next big one is commercial conversions. This is where a lot of people would love to start. I mean, there's a, there's a commercial conversion that we did. Uh, office to 34 apartments, you know, big, big projects, great strategy. And I put, if you can make it happen, the reason I've put that is because few and far people have got the ability to be able to pull these off. They are challenging projects, but, you know, rewarding, no two ways about it. Um, it's hard to find a good deal. So the market was crowded a few years ago because of permit development coming in on the offices. So a lot of the offices went, then there was a lack of offices. So um, they went up in value, which again, just doesn't make it viable to convert into residential accommodation. They're always going to take longer and cost more money than expected. You know, that's a given. Um, the bigger the project, the, the bigger these sort of hurdles. Uh, it can be hard to find a contractor who understands this sort of stuff. So we were lucky. We had a contractor who had done quite a lot of these conversions. Um, but, you know, it is hard to find somebody who understands this and can price them up accordingly because, you know, they are going to put a lot of hidden, you know, big costs in there to just to cover them, you know, when they're stripping these buildings out. Uh, I mean, as a rule of thumb, you know, something like that building there, we, we paid about 120 grand just to our architect. That was without surveys, um, you know, structural surveys, drain surveys, and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, probably 150, 180 grand in just in professional fees alone and legals and that. So, so big money to pay out. Um, the downside of these commercial conversions definitely is, you know, selling lots of units at once, which could flood the market. This particular building here, you know, small town, Harwich. 34 apartments, you know, the chances of 34 apartments all coming out once in that area was, you know, we, we sold a few pretty quick, but then the rest of them just dragged on for, for many, many months, just because there's too many apartments at once. You know, there wasn't a demand there for them people moving in. And uh, the key thing I see is people waste a lot of time looking at these huge conversions for their first development. Uh, you know, and reality is that you're not going to get the lending because of your uh, track record. You know, if you haven't got a track record to deliver projects like this, you know, which I have, um, it's very hard for lenders to put the money into because, you know, on this one, you know, we're, we're sort of 4.6 million GDV. It was a 2.6 million loan. Um, I've got to pay that back, you know, and the lender's going to look at you and say, well, what skills have you got to be able to pay that back? And this is one thing, again, I just think, you know, people look at it and think they can go and do it. Uh, and there's some massive challenges out there. But, you know, great strategy if you can do it. Lots of ups, upsides and downsides. And then the one for us, you know, this is what we do. Uh, it's time proven over, you know, multiple years. It's not going to change for years. Legislation is not going to going to really change it. But, you know, you get large, chunky profits, life-changing six figures from just one deal uh, in 12 to 18 months' time. So not too long to wait. You know, if you think about buy to let, if you were buying one property every six months and adding £300 a month to your cash flow, you know, 18 months' time, you've got £900 a month coming in. If you could have, do a development... And in 18 months' time, you've got, you know, 100, 150 grand in your bank or 500 grand. Which one's going to be better? You know, it's a no-brainer for me. You know, why keep adding £300 a month to your portfolio every, every three to six months? You know, why not just go and build a house and go make 100 grand every six months? Because, you know, we've done deals in, in less than six months. Um, the, other, you know, the other benefit is that you can get paid uh, monthly from, from doing development. You can get paid up to about four grand a month. So you can cash flow it while you're doing the, you know, running your own projects. Um, but there's a huge demand for housing. So we talked about crowded strategies, low entry strategies. Um, you know, the government were very, very, very proactive. They relaxed the planning laws. They kept the construction sites open. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty good. that They realised that they just couldn't go back to 2007, 2008 of, of stopping the construction industry and, and the housing industry. So, you know, it's almost, it's been proven this time, it's almost bulletproof uh, as a strategy. Great leverage of time professionals. So, you know, exa uh, example is freedom and time. So, you know, if I want to go and build 20 houses, I just get two or three gangs of bricklayers. 
you know, if I want to go and do 50 houses, I'll get three or four gangs. So it allows you to scale up or retract as much as you want, depending whether you want to build one house, five houses, 20 houses. Um, you know, Mr. Barrett's, who's building, you know, probably 25,000 houses a year, he couldn't do it on his own. So it just shows the, the leverage, um, you know, that, that comes with property development. Now you've got no overheads or no job creation. And the way, reason I say that is that, you know, you can set a limited company up for sort of 12, 15 quid. That's it. You don't need staff. You don't need an office. Um, you don't need vehicles. You don't need nothing. You can leverage the whole lot out. You can either project manage it yourself or you can get a main contract to do, to do a turnkey development for you. And it's just simply setting up a company to run it. You know, and there you go. And you can run this company from anywhere in the world. Um, predictable bill costs. So this is a good thing, it takes all the guesswork. There's lots of different ways where you can cost up your projects. I mean, I talked about this earlier, didn't I? You know, how is it going to cost up a big project? There's multiple tools out there that we use and teach where people can go and get their, their projects costed, you know, up to the penny um, for very, very little money. Uh, and it's the speed to make money. You know, how many of these do you need to quit your job? You know, if some of you are on maybe 25 grand a year or even 50 grand a year, <clears throat> you know, build one house, make 100 grand, that could be two to four years salary. You know, and you've got two to four years to go and build another house or two houses or three houses. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's the question to ask. And the reason anybody can do this is because it is just a system to follow. You know, if you think about McDonald's, it's a system. You know, people buy the franchises, they stick a manager in there, they stick the staff in there, very quick to train up. They've got manuals for everything. You know, if someone finds a hair in a burger, it's in the manual on how, those, how the staff have got to um, respond to it. All these things are done up front. So, you know, there is no guesswork. There is no, what do we do in this situation? Um, it's all in the manual. It's a system to follow. And when you can follow systems, the, the results are predictable, you know? So if, if you went and found a hair in every single burger in every single McDonald's, every single manager will respond in exactly the same way. Um, you know, so it's, it's a fantastic way to run your business uh, by following systems. And, you know, don't take my word for it. I mean, just look at the FTSE 250. So these are the 250 companies below the top FTSE 100. And all the big developers are in there. I mean, you know, Persimmon's made a, a billion pound profit, I believe. Um, I think their CEO was on like 130 million pound bonus. And there was a bit of uproar over the, the quality of work, I think. And he said, well, okay, look, I'll take it. I'll just take 70 million, you know, gesture of goodwill. Um, but, you know, the money is there in development. And um, I'm not saying, you know, you guys are probably aspiring to be one of the next big developers, but, you know, if you just had 1% of what these guys have got, <clears throat> you could live a pretty um, a pretty good lifestyle on 1% of what they do in a year. Uh, you know, there's, there's plenty to go around for everyone. So, most strategies are not going to get you where you want to be, and where do you want to be? You know, do you want the holiday homes, the cars? Do you want the watches? Um, you know, do you want the money, just to, just to have some money in the bank, a bit of financial freedom, a bit of security? Uh, do you want the holidays? Do you want to quit your job? Do you want to tell your boss, you know, stick it, I'm done, you'll never see me again, you know, I'm worth better, I'm, I'm worth more than that, I'm better than that, and, you know, uh, I want to do what's best for me and my family, uh, spend more time with your family, <clears throat> you know, do you want financial freedom? You know, where is financial freedom? Is it is it just ahead? Is it just around the corner? Or, you know, it, have you really got to go and do 20, 30 years doing something you don't really want to do just to get just enough to live on? You know, because I tell you now, Retirement for me is not sitting in my house, monitoring the heating controls and watching Countdown and, you know, um, living on soup. That's not retirement for me. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people do have to do that for retirement because, you know, they've gone from five days a week working, you know, two days a week off a week to seven days a week off on half the money. You know, and if you think about it, if you're working five days a week now and having two days off and you're struggling to pay your bills, you're not going to do that when you've got seven days a week off and you're earning probably, you know, a quarter or a half of, of what you're earning now. You know, if you're a tradesman earning sort of 12, 1500 quid a week and you're going to go down to 120 pound a week pension, state pension, you tell me how you're going to live seven days a week on 120 pound a week. And of course, so many people like trades, for example, have got zero in place to retire on you know and for the, for me this is not about retirement it's about creating a lifestyle not not a retire not an end goal um but you know again if you take anything away from this webinar you just question what you've got in place to retire or to be able to give you financial freedom when you do choose to sort of 
chuck the tools in or even forced to chuck the tools in from from you know a bad back um because i'm telling you you know 120 pound a week that is no lifestyle you are going to be well you're not going to be going out you're not going to be doing anything because you know by the time you paid your council tax less electric gas um not even driven you you know your one liter car it's, it's going to be a tough time and the sooner you guys say yeah do you know what i've got to go and change something i've got to do something about it today um the quicker that will come where you don't have to worry about retirement or you won't, you won't want to retire if you create a nice lifestyle as simple as that um so you know financial freedom for me it allows me to go away in my caravan you know i like to, I like to go in a bit of caravan in uh, nice and relaxing my dodge challenger uh, i'm going to be getting that next year and i'm not just going to go and get any old dodge challenger i'm going to go to america uh, and I'm going to buy it and I'm going to import it and I'm going to drive it back across the country uh, and bring it back. Uh, I'm going to do lots more fishing and my Ducati. My, we're looking for a holiday villa. So this year um, we're going to be going down to Spain to look for uh, uh, another house, which will be our holiday home for now. But eventually it will be our permanent residence. Uh, we're going to play more golf, we're going to more cycling all over the world and we're going to do more skiing. So that's, that's what financial freedom has allowed me to do uh, as much as that whenever I want, wherever I want, without having to worry about uh, the cost. So let's look at some case studies uh, because I want to show you guys just what is possible. And I think when people think about developments, they think you've got to go and build 50 houses or 30 houses. And it really doesn't have to be that way. So I want to run through some of the stuff that we've done uh, and then we'll show you the numbers and you know just how simple these projects are. And then um, it'll give you, you know, maybe just give you a bit of a, a sort of thing. So actually, you know, if he's done it, then, then so can we. And that's that's always been my philosophy. You know, if someone else can do it, you know, so can I, because I've just got to copy what they do. So this one, uh, it was a double garage, <coughs> excuse me, uh, just a prefab garage on the side of a bungalow, so a garden plot, uh, and we decided to build a bungalow, put planning in for a two bed, and then when we got building it, we thought, you know what, let's just reconfigure the rooms and we'll go for a three bed, which added another uh, another quite a few thousand pounds for not much, much cost. So there's one of my sons, I've got two sons, twin boys, Luke and Lewis, that's Luke, uh, they've they've quit their apprenticeships to come and work with me full time doing developing because they just said look what's the point spending three years to become a plumber, an electrician, if we spend three years doing development, you know where we will be you know and those boys are, are good grafters and you know they're on site today doing some stuff uh, just started a new site today, you know and they're down there with a the digger clearing it so, you know that's that's their philosophy, um, but this one was a simple bungalow as you can see it's a, it's an up and over it's not much different than building a um a triple garage really. And we could have done a hip roof like the bungalow next door, but we just no straightforward trusses. Keep it keep it simple, you know. And this is what it's about. It's about just getting in and out, building something you know nice, but not not over complicating things. And um, there's us digging the footings. So me and Luke down there. This is my boys are at school at this point though, so they're only like sort of 17 years old. Um, but they used to come down here in their dinner times and, and after school and, and work on the projects and weekends. Uh, we paid 55000 for this. Uh, it was on the market for a lot more than that, but we negotiated the price pretty good. <clears throat> Build fees, seventy five grand. Uh, GDV, two two thirty, uh, And the profit was hundred grand. So, you know, hundred grand, and we built this in uh, only 50 days. So, I mean, yeah, okay, you know, long days, but, you know, it, it was still 50, uh, 50 days and £100,000. So, you know, that's an amazing profit just for building a simple bungalow. <clears throat> right, so we're going to this one. Again, it's a new build house. So we bought this bungalow. It was going to go on the market uh, through the auction, but my, uh, you know, my wife managed to get it off the agent before it went to the auction. Um, you know, there's us just stripping it out. We had to strip all the asbestos out. Now, when you get things like asbestos and archaeology and you know ground contamination, all that, you know, don't run away from things like that. Don't let them scare you because once you understand it, you realise it's actually opportunity and you can get yourself a bargain because most developers will just sort of run off in the other direction. So. We tend to buy a lot of stuff that's got like a little issue like that that we can resolve. Um, but we stripped all the asbestos off, you know, stripped it all back, cleared the plot. Uh, that was the CGI that we were going to look to put on there. So we went from a, an 80, 80 square meter bungalow to a 160 square meter house with a garage. And, you know, there's my son doing the concrete footings on his own with a pump. Uh, and there's us just stripped off the asbestos. Well, the guys are stripped off the asbestos. We were just taking all the trusses and all that down. Uh, purchase price 60,000. Uh, gross development value 280, the build was 108,000, and the profit was 112,000. And this took five months. And we built this while we was building another one up, just up the road. Uh, and, and through COVID, uh, we was at foundation level. You know, I think when we just pumped the the footings, we were just went into lockdown just just literally just after that a couple of days. And um, 
but you know, 112,000 pound profit for five months, you know, and like I said, if you look at the average salary of 27 grand a year, that's four years money for the average working person. Uh, and there's, there's a lot better tax incentives for property development than what there is for an employed person. Um, but you know, look, anybody can do this. I mean, look, there's my son stood in front of the house. It's nothing fancy about this house. It's just a nice four bedroom house. It's rooms all upstairs, vaulted ceilings. We just followed the system. You know, we followed the system for buying the land, for funding it, for getting it built. Uh, and you know, there's my son stood outside. You know, for him, he he just loves these photos because he's like, yeah, we've done it. You know, money's in the bank. People moving into a nice house. Another development completed. I walk away proud. Uh, you know, and that makes me really happy as well. So another simple one. Uh, but another bungalow we do build quite a few bungalows they do sell well and they, they are cheaper to build so they do fetch a higher price pound per square foot but not many people build bungalows um, but yeah if you can, we do we just like them because they're very very quick and simple to build so this one uh, again we, we tend to use the same bricks all the time same material so that we can just go from site to site to site uh, and they're readily available but this was just again it was another garden plot uh, bought on right move so you know none of these are, are, are technical um, you know, no ninja ways to go and find all this land. There are lots of ways that we talk about and, and teach about finding land, but this was just bought on right move like anybody else. So the way we see it is when people come by and they say, oh yeah, you know, I'd love to have bought that. And it's like, well, why didn't you? You know, it was on the right move. You know, you could have bought it. Instead, we bought it. So that's the way we look at it. Um, again, straightforward bungalow with a garage. Like I say, not, not a massive plot, but quite a nice plot with, with uh, trees and field views at the back. Um, that's six weeks work, less than six weeks. We'd already got the trusses on. So from clearing the plot, uh, there's me and my boys. So purchase price, 80,000, uh, gross development value is 300. The build was 105, uh, and 115 grand profit again. So five months build time. And that picture was took after just seven weeks. So within seven weeks, we've got the roof on and all the windows in, you know, all the drives hard cored, uh, and then was ready to start work on the internal. So, and this is, um, this was during COVID, this picture was took, um, but it just shows how leverage, you know, how using leverage, we had a gang of bricklayers on there and a roof and, and the guys fit the windows. We did all the groundworks and, and we did some other stuff like fencing. Um, but it just shows that, you know, you could be doing something while you're leveraging the time of others and you can earn the profit. Instead of just trading your time for like 200, 250 pound a day as a tradesman, you know, you could be getting paid two grand a day, three grand a day, uh, and still just doing your job. You know, you get your project management fee, you get your, you get your labor for working on the tools, um, you get the finder's fee for finding the sites, you get the developer profit. You've got four ways of getting paid there. Um, incredible money for just doing what you do probably on a day-to-day -day -day basis, building extensions around people's houses. Uh, and I have a lot of builders come through my three-day training events um and on to you know onto mentoring and stuff like that because for them it's it's straightforward they're already doing it they've got the skills uh and it's just you know rather than going work for customers they might as well go and work for themselves and again there's the photo shot both my sons stood out there on this one you know another one sold money in the bank uh, and another nice place for someone to go and live so moving up slightly bigger, so this is one we were just recently finished, uh, five houses, again, it was a garden plot, again, on right move, you know, again, no no special tactics finding this one. Um, no one went to view the, the site, so I always teach people to go and get in front of vendors and talk to them and build rapport and find out what the motivation is for selling, etc. Uh, and this was a prime example, you know, nobody came to view this property, they all sit behind the keyboards, and it's like, look, you've got to get out there and go and speak to people because people do business with people at the end of the day. Um, so we, we was the first one to buy it, first one to put an offer in, first one to view it, should I say. And, um, you know, we got it a good deal. So we paid 280. It was on for 330. So we got 50 grand off straight away. Um, I put 125 grand into this to buy it. My lender put in 155, my development lender. And then they give us 100% money for the build. So people might sit here and think, yeah, but I haven't got 125 grand. Well, my 125 grand came from the previous property that we built. So all the properties we build and buy and land, we never put any money in. It always just keeps rolling over from development to development because we use the same lender and we don't use all the money that they give us to build. We can we have surplus funds, which we can then go on to use to buy other sites with uh, and just move from one site to the other. So, um, you know, for us, like, yeah, we don't put any money in. Uh, but GDV, 1.994 million. All sold. Uh, the bill was nine hundred sixty grand. Uh, profit seven hundred thousand plus for eight months' work. So you know, if you think about, it's taken us five months to build a bungalow. It's only taken us another three months um, to build, you know, a 
the five houses. Again, because of leverage, you know, gang of bricklayers, the roofers, we've got the forklift on site, um, got some ground workers coming in. But, you know, we did a lot of work on this ourselves, me and my sons. But £700,000 for eight months' work, that's life changing money, like serious life changing money. You know, and again, if you if you was earning 50 grand a year, that's 14 years where you wouldn't have to go to work again after you've just worked in eight months. So you can see why if you did, you know, maybe five years of this, you could be done. You know, you could be out. You could have probably done, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even ten developments over five years, and you could just be retired with, you know, more money in the bank than what you know what to do with, job done. You know, so we talked about retirement on the hundred and twenty pound a month from the government or five years from doing something like this. It's it's definitely worth looking at this strategy. Uh, this is one we're currently working on. Uh, it's a bungalow to a five bed house, so it's all been demolished now. And again, you know, there's me pulling up uh, it on site in the Range Rover to buy it. Yeah, you know, I even said to my son, I was watching. I said, "Deal done, mate." I said, oh, "This one's in the bag." And he went, "We well, haven't even met the vendor." I went, "It's in the bag." I said, "I'm, you know, I'm that confident we can get this for this price." So, paid fifty five grand for it. It was worth one hundred twenty five grand. Uh, we, we we're, we're now in a position where we are our own bank, so we've we've managed to get you know accumulate enough money where we don't need to go out to development finance or you know, private investors or anything like that. And that's where you guys can easily get to within a few years as well. Um, gross development value, 395,000. Build on this is 150. Um, you know, we are looking to make sort of a, around 190,000. This one's been valued now at around 460, 480. So the GDV has gone up. That's why the profit's gone up. Uh, but again, it's just a five month build. You know, 190 grand for building a single house. You know, anybody can build a single house. There's lots of self-builders out there who just go and build their own house. Admittedly, you know, they might go over budget, uh, might run over on the time, but, um, you know, they still come out healthily on the upside when, when they've been and set, you know, been there and done it. And, you know, if you've got the system to show you what to do, you, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't run it on budget and on track, you know, on time. So very, very simple. Lots of these deals out there, you know, there's loads and loads of projects like this. You don't need to go and build, you know, 10, 20, 30 houses to go and make a six figure profit. You really don't. Uh, this is another one. This is where my sons have started work on there today. So they've just started clearing all the trees. Um, we've got a building to demolish. Um, we're going to put some fencing up. Uh, but then we're going to drop back onto this later on in the year. We did put planning in for five bungalows because it was five back gardens. Uh, it got refused. And in the end, um, the council said, yes, you can build three big ones. Uh, but it pretty much works out better for us, to be honest, building three big ones. So, you know, paid 240 grand for the land on an option agreement. And it's valued at 435,000. So already we're 195 grand up in profit of what we've made. Take about 10 grand off for, for the option agreement and legals and, and planning. Um, so 185 grand up you know, in the bank straight away. And this one, you know, GDV 1.305 million. Builds, it's going to cost about 500 grand to build these three bungalows and put all the road in. Uh, profit 565,000 for eight to nine months. So, you know, just this year. We're going to be doing uh, this one. So there's 190 there and there's 565 there. So, you know, we're already on, uh, what's that, sort of 750 grand for just for building four houses. You know, and this is going to take us sort of eight to nine months of, of doing it because we'll do both sites together at the same time. You know, that's that's not bad just for building four houses, three quarters of a million quid. Uh, okay, and this is another one we're working on. So this just shows you what's out there. We find some of our sites via Google Earth. This is just one house sitting on here. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're looking to build uh, six, so um, three pairs of semis, two beds. And this is direct to vendor stuff that we go to and we talk to them and say, look, you know, let's do a deal together. Are you interested in selling your land? This is what we can build on there. This is how we have arrived at paying you, you know, a certain amount of money. So lots and lots of deals out there uh, on things like this for you to do. Now, the reason we can keep doing these deals is because, again, we're just following the system um, that we've created. You know, finding the land, we assess the plot for um any problems so whether it's got contamination overhead cables you know bad access whatever um but then we look at all that sort of stuff then we get the planning permission then we appraise the sites you know and you know how to work out all the build costs choosing a build system because there's lots of different build systems out there you know some of those have got speed advantages some of those have got cost savings uh how to put in your offer now one thing i will say is that all of our offers have been accepted lower than the minimum price that the vendor says they will accept. So if a bit of land's on for 100, and I say, what's your lowest you'll take, and the vendor says 90, we'll pretty much get that for 80 grand. You know, now it's not about ripping somebody off, 
it's just that there's there's techniques um, that you can use to get your offer accepted and uh, you know lots of my mentees now are getting amazing deals at amazing prices because um, they're using what, what we call as an offer pack that's, that's the offer pack that we put together so they just literally co copy and paste their stuff into my offer pack present a deal and they're, and they're getting a massive high rate of success now so um, and then we talk about funding and developments uh, and then obviously getting it built that sort of stage eight so eight steps very very simple just follow these steps every single time you look at developments uh, and you'll pretty much come out with the same result so let's have a quick look at these eight steps in, uh, in a little bit more detail so finding the land we show you multiple ways to find your first plot and build a pipeline of deals so the opportunities come to you so at the beginning you've got to go out there and do the legwork but eventually you know you'll be the like the lead, the, the the land magnet and you know your agents will start calling you um, your director vendor letters will start coming back in and returning the phone calls some of these deals that you've put offers in will fall through and they'll come back to you so eventually you'll have more land than you can sort of shake a stick at but at the beginning yes you've got to go and do the legwork uh, assessing the plots so you learn what to look for when looking at land so you can avoid the pitfalls that other developers make so I know so many people that have gone out and bought land tried to get planning it's failed and they're stuck with a bit of land you know and then it costs them fortune so we show lots of ways to de-risk this sort of stuff and go out and secure the land with a uh, you know very very cheaply simple bit, simple bits of paper legally binding bits of paper where then you can commit the time and money uh, you know a little bit of money to get the certainty to then go on and get the funding and then complete on the deal and it's a best it's just the right way to do it you know you don't need to go and do all this risky stuff that other, other developers do and then make the mistakes and you know we teach a lot of people how to do that uh, so next one is planning permission understanding the planning process is key and we'll show you each stage of the process and how to benefit in your area uh, appraising the site so understanding your numbers and build costs is essential to maximizing your profit we'll show you how to accurately cost your development and by accurately costing your development, it's going to give you confidence in putting your offers in. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, choosing a build system. So from traditional brick and block to building a house in just one day with fully volumetric, we'll show you multiple construction methods and their advantages. Um, so there's lots of different build systems, you know, steel frame, panelized systems, uh, SIPs panels, you know, volumetric, and so many different systems out there. And, you know, you can't just sit there and just say, oh, we're just going to build brick and block like everyone else does. Because, like I said, the world is changing uh, and you've got to stay in front of these people. Uh, putting in the offers, we provide you with a template. So this is the offer pack that I was talking about that will give you the advantage in getting your offers accepted, even if they are lower than the competition. Uh, you know, and people think that the highest price is always going to win and it, it's not always the case. You know, I've just had one where one of my mentees has just got a deal accepted. Um, his price wasn't the highest price and they went with him. And it's because they didn't quite trust uh, the other person 100%. So I showed this guy lots of different ways and conversations to go back and build that trust and rapport, you know, and they, they shook hands on the deal just only a couple of weeks ago, which is great. And then the last two steps, you know, funding your build. So you learn how to position yourself and fund your developments easy by having multiple options, including 100% funding. Uh, we show you lots of ways to, you know, raise the money, position yourself, um, introduce you to my broker. So my broker, you know, he's the one that brings all the money in for us. And then the lenders then fund our deal after deal after deal. Um, but again, you know, ultimately you want to become the money magnet uh, and then getting it built, now it's time to build your developments on time and on budget, get it sold, make a six-figure profit, and create the life of your dreams. So MMC, Modern Methods of Construction, is coming. So this is just one of the build systems that we're talking about. Um, this is a panelized system we're looking to use, where the window's already in, um, the plasterboard's already on, the insulation's already on. You know, such a time-saving system that, that, that we're looking to use rather than, you know, it keeps, keeps a lot of trades off-site. It keeps a lot of materials off site, cuts down on a lot of wastage, um, but you know, time is money. You know, if you can build a house in a fraction of the time, you're going to get the money in the bank and you're going to be able to roll it into more developments uh, a lot quicker. And I'll give you an example. Um, let's say we're going to buy a site for, uh, let's say, a hundred thousand pound. Now I could put a hundred thousand pound into one bit of land, and you know, development finance brings me in all the money to build it, and I might I might make a hundred thousand pound profit. Now if I can put fifty percent of the land money in, so fifty thousand pound. And the lender puts in 50%, and then they give me 100% of the money for the build. I could, I've then got 50,000 pounds I can go and buy another bit of land with. Um, okay, it might cost me a little bit more money because the lender's putting in a bit more money uh, for the purchase, but my 100,000 pounds can go and buy me you know, two bits of land to build two houses that make 100,000 pounds each. So then I'm making 200,000 pounds off the same money in the, in the same amount of time because I can do two, two builds together. So, you know, leveraging your money is a fantastic way. Uh, of doing these developments and these build systems uh, again can help you do that so 
you know, this is a system, it all comes out in kits, game changing system, but this is the big stuff that is coming. Uh, and it's, it's the factories, you know, they're building houses in factories now. Uh, and this is going to be the future. Um, no two ways about it. I know a lot, a lot of people argue and say, oh, it never work, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's a housing crisis and, there's, you know, these people are here to solve it. Because what we're doing, you know, like, like I said earlier in the slides, if something's not working, you've got to change it. And, um, you know, if you think about it, why would you wouldn't go and build a car in a muddy field through the winter, you know, and having all your parts delivered out there and lots of people building that car who don't really know, you know, what the set standard is or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So if you think of these houses, they're going to be built like cars in, a, in an assembly line. You know, all the materials come in one, de one end and out the other end, like really high quality control. Uh, precision uh, and you get the same thing at the end every single time so you know that that's the way housing's going you know all built in factories not, not looking like any different to any other houses when they're built safe working conditions not weather orientated you know you could do three eight hour shifts and do a 24 hour shift for example uh, and ramp up production um, but you know love it or hate it this is the way it's going and this is the sort of stuff you need to learn about you know, when they're built, you know, they don't really look any different than, than any of the normal houses. No one knows the difference. They're all mortgageable. You know, that's the, that's the question I'm sure some of you are asking. But, you know, as a developer, you want to be able to look at all the tools and resources available. And, you know, if you can just go and get a ground worker to put all the ground works in, you've got a factory that will just do everything from ground upwards. That's like the, the holy grail of developing because you've only got two moving parts to manage, you know. So really, really simple. Uh, and, you know, this is the sort of stuff you need to be learning about. So ask yourself one question, um, will the thing, and I've put in the bracket strategy or job, but that could be business, trade, anything like that, will the thing you are doing right now really get you to where you want to be? Now, a lot of people don't even think about where they want to be. They, they wish, but they don't have this vision of, yeah, in five years time, I'm going to live in that country, I'm going to be doing this for work, and we're going to go to the gym, and I'm going to play golf twice a week, and I'm going to do all this, and I'm going to drive this car, etc. They don't have that vision and they certainly don't have it clear enough. But, you know, will the thing you're doing right now really get you to where you want to be? And, you know, I've put be honest with yourself. And I think you've got to be honest with yourself because a lot of people lie to themselves. You know, where do you really want to be? Um, and you've got to say, you know, is this going to get me to where I want to be? Because if it isn't, then, you know, you've got to change and do something about it. Because if you're not, I guarantee you'll be in the same place. And, um, you know, set a date in your diary now, one year from now. So go into your calendar, put, put today's date in there a year, set a reminder. Am I where I was 12 months ago? You know, and um, it will be a wake up call. For, so for the people that, you know, don't go off and go and do something about it, I guarantee they'll look at that message and be like, yeah, do you know what? Andy was right. I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm working for the same boss on the same salary, driving the same car, pretty miserable. Um, or the people that do, you know, go out and educate themselves and, and start, start, you know, start a new strategy and make those changes, they'll say, yeah, do you know what? It's been a tough year. It's been a roller coaster year, but wow, look, I'm on site. I'm doing it. I'm building some houses and, you know, I'm, I'm due to sell these houses in the next six months and get the money in the bank. So set that in your diary now, 12 months. That's an action step. I give my mentees a lot of action steps to do. And um, yeah, so we'll see where you are in 12 months after, to, after today's webinar. Uh, and I, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about some people that uh, you know did make that decision to um, to say no. I'm not going to be in the same place in 12 months' time. So this is Frank and Lorraine, uh, two of the nicest people you, you'll ever meet. Frank's a bricklayer. I mean, he's in his 60s. I know you don't look it. Uh, he's as fit as a fiddle, loving life. Just had enough of working for customers. You know that was his drive, and he, he's done three projects now, uh, all garden plots. You know, there's me uh, outside his bungalow that he just sold. Literally, got I was on stage teaching at my event uh, just a few weeks ago, and Frank was there. He was just coming to just talk talk about his journey, and he just showed me his phone, and it got 190 grand gone into his bank, and he's just smiling with a thumbs up, and you know, he goes, "Mate," he said, "What a feeling," you know. Before that, he's 200 pound a day working for customers, so um, it's that for me. That's rewarding, and you know, and he's he's made a 500 grand profit just from building three houses. Um, you know, he's gone down the, the garden the, the garden strategy, works every time for him, rinse and repeat. I mean, again, nothing complicated, not building big, massive, fancy half million pound houses. Um, but it's put that, you know, this development will be life changing for me and my partner. Anyone can do developments if you are prepared to put in the graft. 
Uh, this was a garden plot which I gained planning permission on. The build three, uh, three bedroom detached house, valuation over 250, not bad for a bricklayer. You know, me and my partner educated ourselves in 2020, so not too long ago, it's 2022, you know, and he's made he's made 500 grand already. So, um, on, on, the, on the blueprint. So, you know, certainly it shows what's possible, doesn't it? Uh, another guy, Ash, lovely guy, school teacher from Telford, um, half million pound profit. That's what he's looking to make. He's on site now. He's not quite finished, um, but he's well underway. Um, I know one of the guys who, who works for him is, is a plumber. I know he's doing all the plumbing for him at the minute. Um, project time, 12 months. So no experience and no money. Uh, and like I said, he is a school teacher. He'd done up a couple of um, couple of little refurbs before, but no build experience. Um, and two weeks before he had to complete, he had no money for this deal. And I, I told him how to go and do it and, um, you know, held his hand a little bit. And, and yeah, he raised the money. And like I said, there he is on site. And there's Frank, actually. Frank popped down to see him as well. So we're building this big community. We talked about the Facebook community page. Um, people who come through the training, they do get a private Facebook support group where they can ask questions um, and network with like-minded people. Uh, and everyone supports each other. You know, it really is a community, so which is good to see. But one of the big things on this, this case study for me and, and why I do what I do is Ash had a few challenges with, with some bricklayers. And like I say, I'm always at the end of the phone for these guys. And uh, I said to him, you know, you, you, is it not stressful? You know, well, you, you seem like you've, you've got a lot on your plate. You know, big, big deal to go and do three hours on your first thing. He said, no, nah. he said, because, you know, my old job as a teacher, which he'd quit, by the way, um, he said, look, I used to get kicked, punched, spat at, you know, racism. Um, he said, so this is like the dream for me. He said, because this deal means I'm never going to have to teach again. It's 10 years, you know, 10 to 12 years salary. And he said, I'll get to spend time with my family. So he said, this deal, one deal here is life changing for me. And I thought, well, that's what that's what does it for me. You know, just being able to help people change what they're doing, get away from what they've been doing for years, um, handhold them through these developments and get them to where they want to be. So really rewarding for myself. Uh, another couple of guys, Adam and Dave, really nice guys, got this site, uh, director vendor, Took it through planning, 350 grand profit, 12 months, no money again, raised the money through through joint venturing. Uh, in the end, they, they, did, they didn't quite get this scheme, but it's just been approved for four, uh, four bungalows, so only just re really recently. But, you know, such simple builds. Again, not overcomplicating it. You don't need to go and build really fancy stuff and get carried away like the self-builders do. You, you know, you're going to be a developer now doing this stuff. So you've got to think about what the market wants and, um, you know, time and efficiency. Uh, Glenn and Marianne. Uh, again, found this site within two weeks on right move, agreed the deal, um, raised the money from an investor um, that they were working with. And what they did, they got talking to the neighbours because the neighbour had a bigger plot and they agreed to build um, another bungalow in their plot. So they've actually got two out of this one. Uh, had some challenges with some legals, but you know, put them in touch with my solicitor. They've um, persisted with it and they got it all over the line now, but it's looking to make a 250 grand profit you know, for 12 months. I mean, just two simple bungalows. We're not talking massive, crazy schemes here. And it just shows that, you know, again, on right move, speak to the vendor, um, know the conversation, put in the offer pack, get your deal accepted, speak to my like legal team, my my, um, my broker and my um, solicitor, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to hand help you over those, uh, over those deals. Uh, Andy, so Andy's an architect, um, you know, been doing this for years for other developers and thought, well, hold on. It's my time now to do it for myself. So 150 grand profit, 12 months project, no money in for him. It's a joint venture with a landowner uh, and here, you know, in the developing homes community. And he's put first deal. It's been a long, a bit, a bit, a bit of a long and drawn out process, but delighted to have my first land deal secured. It's in partnership with a landowner. So I won't be diving into piles of cash like Scrooge McDuck just yet, uh, but it's a great little project to get started and definitely a step in the right direction. Something I never would have considered until attending Andrew's course uh, and a few one-to-one -one sessions. So, you know, excellent. You know, can't wait to see him uh, crack out that project. But it's just, just such a simple project, you know. And he's got his um, offer pack there, all branded and set up with a deal uh, agreed in there. So, fantastic. Uh, Curtis and Jack, a couple of chippies. 400 grand profit, 12 months time. They're going down the timber frame route for speed. Four houses, I mean, like the chippies, so they can do all, you know, they can put timber frames up themselves. But, you know, obviously timber frame company does come with labour. Um, but again, just keep it simple, you know, two pairs of semis, 400 grand from just building four houses. Such a simple project to do for, you know, for anybody by following the system. Uh, Connor is another guy, uh, 800 grand profit from just one deal, planning for four bungalows, 
a 12 month project, no money, no experience, again, no experience for this guy. Uh, the money's gonna come from his building contractor who, who's, who's been doing some work for him for years. Direct to vendor strategy, so you know, right into the vendor. Uh, this one wasn't on the market. But you know, even if he splits that profit, you know, sort of 75, 25 to his builder, because his builder's putting in all the money and doing all the work, 25% of 800 grand is still 200 grand just for finding the deal. You know, and he hasn't got to go and lay a brick. He hasn't got to do any of the work. He's got to do nothing. He hasn't even got to put the money in. He's just literally been out there and sourced the deal direct to vendor. Uh, and again, you know, just a few phone calls, few letters, uh, and it's over. It's in the bag with the offer pack. And then Robbie and Ali, uh, again, so two of the nicest people you'll ever meet. There's me and my son Lewis on site. Went to see him on site uh, not too long ago. Check on progress. Keep an eye on his sites and. Um, just have a good catch up, have a coffee. Uh, so naught to 25 million pounds um, of developments in 18 months. So he's got a 25 million pound pipeline now of deals, all secured, none of his own money. He's got investors come on board and the more he does, the more he gets. You know, this is the law of attraction and um, and what's gonna be the result for you guys. He's also getting big finders fees once he gets the sites over the, over the deals over the line. Uh, so a finder's fee is when you bring in the deal and the, and the lender will happily put uh, give you a finder's fee for sourcing the deal. You know, if you're buying a million bit of land, those finder's fees can be 20 to 30,000 pound, you know, before you've even got on site. Uh, and then also he's getting the big project management fees. I mean, at the minute he's got two sites running, he's just about to get a third up. And if you're getting 4,000 pound per site per month, you know, that could be 12 grand a month just to run three sites. Now he's not doing the work. He's got, you know, he's just managing the labor and the materials. Um, you know, so if you can be earning 150 grand a year just managing your sites and then getting your profit. Uh, and I think these guys, you know, when I spoke to them last, because um, they came into one of my events, they said that they're looking to make 10 million um, pound profit in, in the next 10 years. So you know, I think they'll it will go way beyond that because of their pipeline is just growing and, and the sites are getting bigger. So, you know, couldn't be happy for them. And, um, you know, like, if you want to see a little video on Robbie after this one, check out my YouTube channel. This is, um, you know, why you want to like and subscribe to it and hit the notification bell because... I'm going to be doing more interviews with my mentees uh, as we get going. Uh, this was just a quick one on that day when we went to visit Robbie. Uh, what you see is what you get with Robbie. He's just a, you know one of the nicest guys you'll meet. Uh, and he says it how he is. He does swear a little bit, so hopefully he won't get me a strike on YouTube. But um, you know, it's, it's a, like I said, what you see is what you get with Robbie. And he's quite open and transparent about his journey and, and, and here to inspire you guys sitting here watching this. Okay, so why property development? Um, and again, this is that question, you know, people sitting here saying, can I do it? Can I do it? And I'm like, look, you are simply sitting in the middle of this jigsaw puzzle. So these are all your professional teams. You've got your solicitor, your builder, you've got your planning department, the building control department, your architect, your estate agent, your broker who brings in, and then your, your funding, which is your lender. And you sit in the middle, and I still think it takes as much work to build a house and what it does uh, convert a HMO for all of you guys that are doing you know, property investing as it is. Um, you, you are the orchestra who organizes all this and all this team liaises with each other. You know, your architect organizes everything between building control and planning uh, and even your builder, your broker talks, at, you know, discusses the funding, your solicitor deals with the agent. So you just sit in the middle and a lot of the stuff you can manage from a laptop abroad most of the time, as I do. Uh, and here's, you know, here's a better diagram. There's your architect sits in the middle and they pretty much talk to everybody. They talk to the lender about you know, the size of the land uh, and the titles, that's gonna be split. Uh, and then they can send stuff off to the broker for like bill costs, your estate agent, tenure warranty. And then, you know, down the bottom, you've got your builders, which can you can project manage and run yourself, or it could be a main contractor, like I said, just, you know, one contract, turnkey, turnkey contract, full turnkey service. And, you know, look, I think this works because it's not a get rich quick scheme. You know, if you think of get rich quick schemes like, you know, Forex, um, I'm not saying about Amazon is a, is a get rich quick scheme, but, you know, Bitcoin, all this sort of stuff where just people want to put the money in thinking that it's going to work. Well, the reality is nothing works unless you work. You know, you've got to do the work. But this is a proven system many, many times over. And as you can see from the guys coming through the training, you know, they are getting amazing results. Um, and check out the FTSE, so like I said, you know, all these companies are making a lot of money because it's a time-proven system and that's what we're trying to replicate. So would you like to earn a six-figure profit from property development? You know, I think that the question's pretty um, self-explanatory and the answer is, you know, most likely going to be a yes. Uh, would you like to live life on your terms, um, you know, rather than working for your boss? And they always say, don't you, you know, if, if you don't work on your terms, you're going to spend the rest of your life working for somebody else on theirs. 
Uh, and, you know, would you like to be the middle piece of the jigsaw? You know, we're not here to create our jobs. Would you like to sack the boss? Now, I sacked my boss, which was me, because I was the worst boss, because I didn't give myself a day off work. I didn't give myself a pay rise. I didn't let myself have weekends off. Um, I didn't let myself have a lie-in. So I was almost like my worst boss, and I had to sack him. Would you like the real financial uh, freedom and wealth? You know, real financial freedom, not just a, a few hundred quid a month pocket money. You know, would you re like to replicate what I'm doing? Well, hundreds of people already have, but, you know, my three-day events, they, they all sell out. And, you know, they're very hard to get onto. There's normally a waiting list. And, um, you know, for self-explanatory reasons, really, what we teach works and we get a great success. You know, people come out of it at the other end and go on to do developments and make life-changing money. So this causes a bit of a problem. And um, when we was in COVID and we was off for a few weeks, uh, you know, I sat there and I thought, well, look, how can I help more people get started? Um, because, I, you know, if I've only got room for 40 people in a room, sometimes up to 70, depending on which hotel we have, um, how can I help these people that just can't get onto the training or, you know, the training events or maybe, you know, haven't got the time off to travel? You know, if you're a tradesman, you've probably got to take a few days off work. Um, so that's going to be, you know, money lost. So I thought, right, OK. There's definitely a way, and this was it. So it was about setting up the full step-by-step -step system to becoming a property developer based on my three-day training, uh, my live events, uh, and it was an online version. So this is, a, this is the way that every single person can get involved uh, and become a property developer. You know, learn how to make over six figures a year from property developments, even if you don't have any money and experience. Just like Ash, just like some of the other guys in there, no money, no experience, Connor, you know, uh, they follow the blueprint, do the system, use the offer pack, get the deals accepted, raise the money, multiple ways to raise the money, and then get it built. Uh, and there's the eight steps step system that we talked about. Everything from finding the land to getting it built. Why online? Well, okay, let's look at the benefits. Um, fast track your first development by following the eight step system. So we've touched on that multiple times. It's in instant access to the content. So you can start learning this right now or after this webinar. You know, you can get started today. You know, don't wait for another year. Don't wait for two more years. Don't wait until, you know, one day or someday because they never come. Get started today. Uh, and they always say, you know, when's the best time to plant a tree? Today. You know, if it wasn't 20 years ago, it would have been today. Um, it's self-paced learning. So, which is great. If you think about 30 people coming into a classroom at school, we don't all come out the the end all the same. You know, some people need a little bit more time. Some people need to, you know, hear things twice, three times, maybe even four times. Some people just need to break that conversation down. So it's self-paced learning, step-by-step, -step, study at your own pace. Um, you can avoid making the mistakes like others do. Mistakes cost money. Uh, and we want you guys to be able to go out there, get developing, learn about all the pitfalls, position yourself as the expert, uh, and avoid making the mistakes like some of these other big developers. Um, you can watch the content as many times as you like from any device. So whether you're on your phone, your laptop, your, your iPad, whatever, you can watch it wherever you want, whenever you want, as many times as you want. So, you know, you could be sitting there in your dinner break learning this stuff. Um, buy the course once and receive lifetime access to updated content. So as we're going on, there's going to be new uh, methods of construction. There's going to be different changes. There's going to be other education stuff that we want to put in there. Uh, the benefit of what we do and the, our platform that we've got set up is that when we update our system from our end, you automatically get that uh, that in your in your program as well. So there is no the course is going to get outdated. You have to buy another course next year, or you're missing out on additional content getting put into it. That's just going to keep getting updated to your stuff, and you'll be able to see it all the time uh, as you're on your portal. Um, so, and it mean, like I said, it means no staying away in expensive hotels or you know taking days off work and and paying. Um, you know, losing days wages for some of you guys so that's the benefits of doing online training um, you know it's going to gain your confidence and develop your mindset of a property developer really key create a business to work on your terms not a job I mean there's me sitting there on my laptop next to the golf course in Tenerife with my bike and that's how I spend my winters I probably spend about half an hour a day just managing the sites because in the winter we, we tend to take sites through planning through funding through legals uh, and then in the summers we tend to build them out and then as soon as like December comes we're back off out to the to the warmer climates for about five months uh, and that, that's what you, you know you can do exactly the same if that's what you choose to do if you want to work through the winters that's up to you but for us we like to get away and um, like I say get into warmer climates and get a bit healthier and a bit fitter um, generate life changing sums of money from each development get paid four grand a month uh, to run your own developments like I say do multiple developments that's multiple times four thousand pounds 
Uh, I mean, the average wage isn't anywhere near £4,000 a month. So, you know, for some of you, you're going to get a pay rise just to get on your own projects. Uh, demand for housing is growing. Uh, of course, with recessions and COVID and material restrictions, that's just going to put fuel on the fire because, you know, it just slows down the manufacturing of these houses and the production. Um, so at the minute, there's a four million shortage. I'd say that number's probably growing, you know, for the demand. Uh, and the greatest strategy to leverage other, you know, remember the jigsaw puddle. You know, do you want a job managing tenants and properties or do you want a job just managing your, your own lifestyle? I know which one I would rather choose. And what you get is 130 plus individual lessons. So 11 hours of video content, which you can watch over and over again. Various documents in there to support you. So, you know, get you started, get you fast track in. Uh, this is the platform that you get access to. So it's got all the different sections at the top and then you've got subsections down the left. Uh, and you can track your progress at the bottom. And of course, as we add new content into there, you'll be able to see on your progress um, chart whether new, access, new, uh, new stuff's been added, uh, and then you can watch those videos. So this is what you can log into, uh, into as, like I say, anywhere you want in the world from any device. And let's look at some of the people that have been through the training. So Grant, uh, having attended a reasonable number of training courses, it was refreshing to feel that every piece of knowledge and information was passed on to allow you to feel confident enough to go out and find the land and start your own development. Um, the course was literally packed with information that is clear and concise manner. So for me, it's about giving you guys the right training, giving you the confidence, giving you the, the change in mindset and the belief that you can go and do this and haven't, you know, not going out there and thinking, well, actually, it's, it's impossible. So that, that's the, the main basis behind the training is that we want you to be able to go away confidently being able to put this action, you know, put this stuff into action. Dirk, he's an architect, uh, well organized and well presented by, event by Andy Hubbard. Uh, Andrew is very practical and experienced in the built environment, makes him a very effective presenter and trainer. Um, you know, all good stuff. Josh, excellent three days, Randy and Sam. Taken more from the developer's blueprint than any other course I've done. So, you know, lots of these people have done other courses. Great value for money. Sam's a bit cheeky, mind you. That's my wife, Sam. Uh, and yes, she is a bit cheeky. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's for me, that's compliments when people say they've got a lot more out of our course than any other course they've, they've ever done. So... Mark, he's a site agent for one of the big house builders, you know, very experienced, but not doing it for himself. Uh, and it's his time to now go out and run his own developments rather than working for the big house builders. Uh, and, and, you know, he gets the benefit and, and the profit uh, and, and leverage as well. So and he's a wealth of experience about housing development. And I've learned a lot of the three days uh, and the cost was very good for the content. Great banter too. Uh, Matt, thoroughly enjoyable three days. Lots of really useful information. Breaks down the process into understandable parts. Would highly recommend it if you're looking to progress your property career or move into property development, as many of you will be. Uh, Mark, an invaluable three days training. Style of teaching suited me perfectly with lots of practical examples, which built my confidence. Uh, Andy is an expert at getting things done. He knows how to get deals across the line, and I certainly do. That's that's one of my expertise, my, uh, my strengths, uh, and is able to demonstrate his expertise in a way which is easy to understand. Uh, Andrew, central training for first timers and even developers with experience to expand their knowledge and learn the basics and get the confidence to go out and take the action. It's all about getting the confidence and taking out the action. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to reward you guys. Uh, I don't just want to give you um, the training. I always like to give away a few bonuses for people who do take the action. Uh, I'm going to give you my deal analyzer. So this is worth £997 plus VAT. So this is the actual analyzer I use to appraise my sites. And what it does, you will enter in a certain amount of information and it will spit you out at the end, whether it's a, a deal or no deal. Uh, and there's lots of ways you can make it into a deal if it's not a deal, but it, it will tell you within minutes whether any site works for you or not. So that's a real good, valuable tool, saves you a lot of time. And, you know, like I said, it sense checks everything uh, to give you the go ahead, whether it's a deal or not. Um, my land appraisal checklist. So this has got the full list, uh, value is at £497. It's got a list of everything you need to look at when you're looking at a bit of land. So whether there's ecology, bat surveys, asbestos, like I say, contamination, underground pipes, utilities, access, um, subsidence, everything like this. It's got a list on there and you'll tick this off every time you go to look for a bit of land. And it, it, again, you've only got to make one mistake. Uh, you know, that £497 plus that would, would cost you hundreds of thousands of pounds. So well worth that. Uh, my offer pack templates. This is the offer pack that all the guys use for getting their deals accepted. You know, sometimes lower than what the vendor's prepared to take. Um, they just copy and paste all their information into it, replace it for mine, and boom, you know, deal done. And then lastly, there's a, a private Facebook support group. I mean, I've put £997 plus that. I think it's, you know, it should be, it's worth priceless because, you know, people are doing joint ventures 
uh, in that property development group. And like you've seen Robbie in there, you know, not 25 million. He's, he's teamed up with people like Frank uh, and a couple of others in there. And, you know, together they're able to do these, you know, amazing deals, uh, life-changing deals. So there's lots of people, hundreds of people in there now that you can network with, ask your questions in there, get, get your questions answered uh, and get some support from day one. Uh, total value of that is £3,488 plus VAT, but like I said, I think it's worth a lot more than that, just the Facebook group alone. Uh, let's have a look at a few more people that have been doing some training with us. So Bill, you know, really enjoyed free, uh, three days training, hard work and money well spent. If you're thinking about development, it's a must-do course. Andy and Sam are brilliant, very clear plan and strategy to follow onwards and upwards. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to the next adventure. Uh, Nasir, great three days spent with Andy and attendees at Developer Course. Detailed content examples of what is possible for Andy's sharing experience. Feeling more confident to get started with his guidance. Sam, uh, really fun, lots of price information. All levels, developer. Andy's a great trainer. And then Josh, property developer's blueprint. Present around the hood, totally down to earth guy. Easy to relate to, but smashing his property building goals. Real inspiration. Let everything from appraising sites to raising finance. Uh, Andy, he's again working with his son just like I am. Near the end of a great weekend, information uh, it's given us goes way beyond what I've received from any of the training course and happy to answer any of the questions. I feel confident now that I've, I can start a career in property development as my preferred strategy. If you're thinking of land development, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend developing homes. Uh, and, you know, look, they just keep coming. I've got, look, I've got hundreds of these testimonials. Uh, Aaron, you know, was honestly the best course I've ever been on. Thank you very much for a mind-blowing couple of days. Steve, he was on the same event. Aaron, I have to agree with your statement. It's the best property course I've ever attended. It's an absolutely great course and a real game changer. Matt, great course. All you need to know, start property development, pack of information, reasonable price. Uh, Jeff, doing, doing several deals out there with his wife. Uh, excellent course, great content, presented at a level for everyone. Andy knows his stuff and he's doing exactly what he's teaching. And that is key. Learn from somebody who is teaching what they do. You know, we continually are doing sites all the time and every time we learn new information, we pass it on to you guys through the training uh, and mentoring. Uh, Ola Cunley, Property Developers Blueprint, awesome course, great tutors and lovely venue. Penny, brilliant free days, um, well presented. So uh, worth every penny, that's from Penny. <laughs> and, um, you know, we've got loads of these testimonials and, you know, it's really rewarding for us to get this sort of feedback, um, which helps you guys make your decision in moving forward. So remember my financial freedom figure of 2000, sorry, 211,766 pounds. £76 per annum. Um, I've only got to build two houses per year. You know, this is a 17 and a half grand a month to go and do everything I want to do, take all the time off I want to do, travel where I want to drive, I'll travel, drive the cars I want to drive. It's £200,000 a year. I've only got to build two houses and I can build them in less than six months. You know, and, and that's that's what you've got to put into perspective. You know, if you want to if you want to earn, you know, 500 grand a year, you just got to go and build five houses. If you want to earn a million pound a year, you just go and build 10 houses. You know, Persimmons and Barracks and all them sort of companies, they're building 25, 30,000 houses a year. So, you know, it's really easy to get your head around how you can change your life through property development with, you know, with this sort of uh, kinds of money and returns. And, um, you know, that is the simple rule. I mean, we're building four houses this year. Like I say, three quarters of a million quid we'll make. Um, you know, I don't blow all the numbers out of proportion because there's no need to. We're happy on that. I'm not going to spend that sort of money. That's enough money for me for the next three or four years, even if I just did that. Even if I just built them a few houses off, I could have a few years off doing what I want to be doing. Um, but we've got more sites in the pipeline. So, you know, how many houses do you have to build to go and live the life you want? You know, that's the question, isn't it? To be able to go and do everything you want, whenever you want, as much as you want, and go and live where you want, drive the cars you want. You've just literally got to go and build two houses, two or three houses. It's not a lot. And anybody can do that um, by following the system. So Richard Branson, uh, love the guy, love what he's done, uh, you know, and how he's helped people. People like Grant Cardone and um, Alan Sugar, they, I like these sort of people because they, you know, what they say it how it is. And that's what I like, no fluff. But, you know, I love Richard's quote. If someone offers you an amazing opportunity and you're not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. And uh, Grant Cardone will say, commit first figure it out later. So similar sort of thing. Uh, and I love those sort of quotes because I just think they're very, very, you know, they are real. And, and them sort of quotes can change your life if you live to them. So look, we've got the online property developers blueprint here. Um, you can you know, get the full eight step system, step by step system, instant access. You can start learning this stuff within the next 10 minutes. Uh, and you know, 18 months from now, could be cash in your bank from doing your first development. Um, you're going to get all the bonuses, access to the private Facebook support group. You get all this. 
And like I say, you could be learning this in the next 10 minutes, the eight step system. Uh, now normally we charge £1,997 plus VAT for this. And it's well worth it because you can see that the guys are out there making six figures as a minimum on any deal. So, you know, to pay £2,000, for example, and make 100, that's not a bad return on your money. I know if you go and buy a 20 grand car, it's not worth 20 grand in five years time. You know, once you've got this education, it's there forever. You know, you've learned it and you can use it forever. So it's a it's an amazing return on investment. Um, sometimes we'll do a 50% discount. So we do sometimes sell this for £997 plus VAT. But I want to reward you guys, because if you've got this far and listened to all the webinar, then well done, because that shows that you are serious in, uh, in making that change in your life right now. Uh, and I'm going to give you another £200 off. So if you use the code YouTube200 at checkout, uh, and it'll be the first thing it asks you when you go into the, into the checkout on the link in the description, um, you'll put the discount code in there and it'll automatically take another £200 off. Um, so you're going to get this for just 797 plus VAT. You know, this is crazy. This is 797 plus VAT to get the full eight-step system, the, all the bonuses, access to the private Facebook group. And like I said, 18 months from now, you could be receiving 100, 200, 500,000 pound in your bank uh, if you just follow the system and, and copy that exactly what those other guys have been doing um, over the past uh, few years. So if you've got any comments, put them in the group, uh, in the in the chat below, in the comments below. Always get back to all you guys. Uh, make sure you take advantage of this because um, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to offer this for. And uh, let, you know, if I'm going to leave you on one thing, um, remember, if you don't change, nothing changes. So you can't change the way the world is. Um, all you can do is really change you and change what you're doing. And that's uh, that picture there is Bora Bora. That's where we're going at the end of next year after we've finished these houses. Uh, I should be sat out in there, one of them huts, um, working for about half an hour a day, managing my sites, ready for the, the year after, and thinking about more exciting you know, challenges in life and setting more goals. Um, but look, you can get started right now. The link is in the description below. Any questions, put them in the comments. Share this video to everyone you know. Um, get them to watch it. And if you've got any uh, questions at all, reach out on the social media channels. To, um, I'm, I'm there on all of them. Uh, and I'll always get back to you. And I, I want to see you as one of my case studies, one of my testimonials uh, in the video in sort of 12 to 18 months time, you know, with some of those impressive numbers that have gone on to really change your lives as well. So appreciate you guys for watching. It's been a long time. I know I can talk, um, but I really do value your time. And hopefully you've learned a lot out of this webinar today. And I really do look forward to seeing your progress uh, over the next couple of years. Best of luck.